exclusive. Welcome to the Mac from ESPN Plus and welcome to fall football officially on the threshold of the month of October. Rematch from last year, Georgia Southern out of Statesboro, GA, and Ball State here from Muncie, Indiana. Good afternoon, Jim Barber and former Penn State star Toyoka Jackson. Well, we have two very versatile quarterbacks today. Both are different, certainly in years of experience, David Sprin and Caden Samanza. I know they're not opposing each other, but uh, what's the difference between the two? Well, very intriguing matchup. Samanza, young, neophyte, just getting going. But Bryn has been around forever. Two-year starter at Tulsa. Put up big numbers in his career, and you see him right there on your screen. I like his athleticism, sneaky. He wins from the pocket most of the time, though. A lot of confidence. Didn't play well last week, but that confidence in himself will be serving him today. And Samanza Young, just getting started. They love his accuracy and his ability to be anticipatory with his throws. I love his poise, Jim. So both guys, though, will be best served to lean on these dynamic athletes that they have around them. Q running back Marquez Cooper, who last week got to the second line of defense at Indiana State, and with 177 yards, he torched the Sycamores. And when he got that second level, he did damage. Small in terms of stature, compact, but tough. And guess what? He's just not going to run into you. He's got some athleticism as well, so he can do it both ways. He's between the tackles. He's good. He's got great vision. The cutting back is there for him. They will run him early and often. They got their identity started last week. Cardinals probably want to win the game on the ground. As for the visitors from Georgia, this man would like to win it in the air. Mm -hmm. And he's so smooth. He's in and out of his cuts with great fluidity. Man, this guy is a big-time player. He never drops the football. Wisconsin's still trying to find him, still trying to cover him. That won't happen. He lit up the Badgers last week. If Georgia Southern wants to pull off this road win in this big-time battle game, Number two is going to have to be there for him for four quarters. Jack Drake set the kickoff for the Cardinals who win the toss and defer. And deep is a man with a whole lot of speed. Caleb Hood and Dalen Cobb. Cobb 17, a high school 100-meter champion. These guys can fly. And already the Cardinals have given up two special teams touchdowns, one on kickoff and one on punt. This is returnable. Cobb 10, Cobb 20, Cobb to the 30. Man, he gets down the sidelines quickly, and now we've got a flag added onto the play at the 40-yard line. But what about Cobb's speed and how quickly he got? Well, we know you can't teach that. <laughs> so no. if you bring that to the table, you've got, you've got a great start. I think you're going to see a face mask by the defense. I, I thought I saw Cobb's helmet. Face mask. Kicking team, number one. 15-yard penalty, first down. Partner, you were right on top of your game already. Just seconds in. Well, listen, man, uh, I made a lot of tackles, and I was taught by Joe Paterno at Penn State, you can't keep your hands in the face mask. You got to get them down, right? But listen, with that guy, that speed, I don't blame him. Anything you can get your hands on him, that's a touchdown waiting to happen. About the only way you can stop him. <laughs> Time for Davis Brin to go to work at 6'2", 210 pounds. You know, he got a lot of defense from his coaches this week when we talked to him about his five picks. And, yes, some weren't uh, necessarily his fault. But five interceptions, eight times inside the 35, only 14 points. He's got to do better. No question about it. And that's what I love about this game. Always move it to next week. How will he play this week? Bren's going to throw on first down. He threw 52 times last week. This is Caleb Hood immediately David for a first Brent down and a pickup of 13. Hood. So if this is your first time seeing Georgia Southern, you're going to see one of the most precise the and dynamic run. passing games in America. Love to go quickly. Ran 80 plays last week in the loss to Wisconsin, 50. Tioka in the first half. You're talking about stressing the defense. Now, their mm. tongues are wagging when you get up that high. Yes. O.J. Arnold in the backfield, gets the call. Breaks a tackle, breaks a second tackle. Tackle in on first down. The the Eagles are looking solid as he picks up close to seven. So this is a key. For this game, if Georgia Southern is able to run the football at all and have any semblance of balance, they're not going to be stopped today. I'm just no. telling you right now. Ball State better get that running game handled immediately. Brennan second and three. 
Pitching to the outside, incomplete. We've already run three plays in 60 seconds. At this rate, they may top 100. <laughs> Even with the new rules, which don't stop the clock, yeah. uh, after a first down in most of the first half and, and second half. And so one of the pluses for going this fast is the defense can't substitute. Now, that time you see the Eagles bring on their substitution, it gives a chance for the Cardinals to get their substitutions in. But usually they go fast, keeps the defense in base, makes it easier for them to carve up. And despite the loss last week for Georgia Southern, they were 59% on third down. This time, Brynn over center, needing to pick up three. Quick handoff, not going to happen unless there's tackles broken, and that won't happen. Cardinals with some great gang tackling. Well, you get you to see 94 up there, Jack Sape, and yeah, excuse me, he Jim, wasn't alone. Multiple players now. I will take a look at number 11 on the corner of that defense. Look at him set that edge. That's a corner, folks, playing physical. His name is Skinny Charity, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he didn't, he didn't play skinny right there, but that's a great job of setting the edge, and here comes the cavalry from the outside or from the inside out, but that's, that's great pursuit. But I like what you did right there, Skinny. Georgia Southern has gone, Toyoka, from a second and three, now to a fourth and four. Cardinals have not given up a fourth down conversion all year defensively. Mm. Man in motion, faking the hat off by Brent. He's looking for a receiver down the field, and oh. did he get him? Yes, he did. Inside the 20-yard line, Derwin Burgess, Jr., who last year made five catches against Ball State for one 33. Well, I talked about Davis Brin's sneaky athleticism, and that's a free runner getting outside the pocket and throwing a beautiful ball on the run, and Burgess is there for him. Brin over the middle, incomplete. This was a problem for Georgia Southern last year. Inside the 35, eight times we mentioned intended for Keaton Upshaw there, and just scoring 14 points, so they can't self-destruct like they did last week up at Camp Randall. Yeah, moving the ball between the 20s is never going to be a problem for this offense. But if you don't come away with touchdowns, it's all for not, right? And, and, and obviously that showed up last week. So targeting is a concern, as we just heard from our referee, David Siegel. You know, this has been such a concern this year. And, of course, they've changed the rules slightly over the last few years where if somebody is uh, ejected, he doesn't have to make that walk of shame all the way back to the locker. We'll try to figure out who the uh, alleged guilty party is here. In this case, if targeting is confirmed, the Cardinal player is lost for the rest of the first half and the rest of the second. So one of the things we look for is the, the indicators in targeting. Is it forcible contact above the shoulders? Yes, there is forcible contact right to the, the face of the receiver. So the, they, they're trying to protect these, these receivers. They want to make sure that these sort of guys that left out to dry, left hanging out to dry, doesn't take big shots to their head. So he's defenseless. That's hit to the con, uh, hit to the head, forcible contact above the shoulders. That is classic targeting right there by number two, 23, Lawrence Strickland. That would so, be huge. He caused a fumble last week against Indiana State. There was a scoop and score for Keontae Newsom, and he is a major part of that secondary for Ball State. He's a grad student. He's been around for a long time, played a lot of football, and so he knows the areas that you can hit a guy, and he's just a little high right there. Big decision here. After further review, there is no foul for target. Second down. Wow. You don't agree. I don't, because that looked to be forcible contact to the face mask. Was he trying to uh, take him out? No, but intent has nothing to do with it. So, you know, it listens, a judgment call. I say that's a, a targeting foul. The officials say no. Second and ten, just two minutes in, and already the Eagles are threatening. Bren, quick toss. Pass is completed. Finding to Caleb, Caleb Hood. Hood for the first down, second catch of the game last year. Hood, 87 catches, 925 total Martin yards, Strickland. and three touchdowns. And we have a player down back at the 25-yard line. That's Crowder, 72, Khalil who plays right guard in his sixth year. He's a all-conference first-teamer for the Sun Belt. Yeah, Outland Trophy watch list guy. So this is one of their best players. And with that, we will have a timeout. Let's hope the best for him. We'll find out more when we come back. We're 
back in Muncie. Take a look at number 39, Nate Pedraza. Watch the hand, the right hand, come high and hit Crowder right in the eye right there. And obviously that's, that's not on purpose, incidental. Look, the, the, the trenches, Jim, it's not a place for a frame of heart. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in there that, that is really rated X. Yeah, uh, yeah. And that was just an R right there. But I hope Crowder's going to be back in this game quickly. Bishon Wembley replaces him for the moment. First and goal from the six for Georgia Southern trying to strike first in the visiting white uniforms. Little end around activity. Not a bad call as that takes all the way down to the one yard line. Derwin Burgess, who can do a lot of things, and that is running the sidelines, and he was just a yard shy of a touchdown. When you got a dynamic player, you try to figure out ways. And they struggle running the ball at times. So they're going to scheme up run plays with formations and movement. And that time you see a sort of reverse pitch to get one of their best athletes to football in space. Second and goal. High snap, quick throw, touchdown. Design play to Evan Lester Jr. He only had six snaps against the Cardinals last year. Got a big one right there, though. No question about it. And how about the design, though? I mean, so well designed by Brian Ellis. You're showing the defense so much eye candy. You don't know where to look. Now, you tell me. There's a jet sweep going. There's a play action. And then, bam, there's a tight end in the flat. And before you know it, the ball's out of the quarterback's hands accurately. Great hands catch right there. But they do so much offensively to test your eye discipline. Extra point for Michael Lance. Trying to make it 7-0. And a drive that took just slightly over three minutes. Georgia Southern strikes first. Can Ball State afford to get in a, a track meet with these guys? Absolutely not. Uh, why would you ever get in a track meet with a bunch of track stars that they have? Yeah. That's not Ball State's game. What they need is their defense to be efficient on third down and try to hold this score down while their offense possesses the football. Top two categories on your screen. FBS rankings in the top five in the country. This is a very different offense than, say, two years ago, where they were more ground and pound, option type. This is a whole new scheme, whole new culture here at Georgia Southern. They're going to stress you by spreading you out and throwing the football to a lot of different guys and their weapons. They believe they have as great a wide receiver room as they're in America, which is a heck of a statement. There's Clay Helton, second season as Georgia Southern head coach. Spent a number of years at University of Southern California before he was fired. Won a Rose Bowl there. Why oh, you had to bring that up? It was, it was <laughs> at the expense of my alma mater. Now, I mean, we'll get to that graphic oh, later. We don't have to. <laughs> Michael Lance ready to kick off. Already 7 0 in favor of Georgia Southern, which won last year 35 24. Cardinals will start with the ball from the 25 yard line. Caden Samadzu threw three picks against Georgia in one quarter, got the starting nod last week anyway from head coach Mike New. We asked him about it. He said he's just, he's been with us since January. He's got great poise. He really is the kind of guy that we thought would be the starting quarterback Kane here. Samadzu, I think they picked him a long time ago for the job. No question. And, you know, you're going against Georgia in Athens as a true freshman. That'll grow you up in a hurry. Yes. And so that's going to pay dividends as they go down this schedule into October and November. Marquez Cooper, the running back. They'll send a man in motion. No Brady Hunt today. Tight end is injured. Samanza, after a very low snap, gets rid of the ball and incomplete. Intended for Tanner Koziel. You know, when Hunt gets back from his ankle problems, and he has been practicing, Tayoka, you've got two tight ends. They can flex out as wide receivers. Yeah, Hunt will allow Koziel to become the move guy and the H-back type guy, which really sets, really suits his, his talent level and suits his... His really makeup as a football player. He's got great athleticism, but he's not a stud wide blocker that Hunt is. So getting number 80 back is going to be huge for this offense. Probably next week when the conference starts. Man in motion. Run between tackles here. It's going to be third and long. Third and eight. This dynamic duo combines for 81 catches this year and over 800 yards. But Hunt's been out for a while. And Koziel's had to pick up the slack along with another one of the backups, Maximus Max Webster. We were hoping to see Hunt. You know, he's got an ankle. 
he's full go in practice. I think they're sort of saving him for the meat of this schedule uh, when they get into MAC play. But he's one of the best tight ends in America. He's on the Mackey watch list. Three wide, Ahmad Edwards. Look out for him, number 25. Mike Neal really high on him. Samanza steps up. Samanza will run. Samanza is short of the first down by three yards. So I talked about the poise in this, in this true freshman. And that you just saw it right there. He didn't try to force the ball. You saw his pocket presence moving around, keeping his eyes downfield, got as much as he could out of the, the passing opportunity, then took off with his legs. And look, look really good. Again, that's not a, you said that's a nothing play? Well, avoiding the sack, keeping the field position, that's a something play by a freshman. Yeah, I would never call it a nothing play. <laughs> <laughs> there might be other guys that do that. That may. <laughs> Lucas borrowed a punt, averaging already 45 yards per kick. Had one last week that went into the end zone of 65 yards. Australian kicker, the ball bounces at the 35 and will be downed a little bit past it. Time to take a break. Less than five minutes in. In this rematch, Georgia Southern has struck first. Just in case you weren't aware, Mike New is a graduate of Ball State University, led the Cardinals to their greatest single game comeback on homecoming over 30 years ago in his eighth season as head coach of Ball State during the COVID year, took them all the way to the MAC championship and then won a bowl game. And he's uh, not the dean yet, but he's getting close. And Chuck Barton, how about his win last week for Miami over Cincinnati? Mm. First time in a decade and a half. Khalil Crowder, who got uh, hit in the eye, is back. 72 at right guard. A five receiver set. Three to the left of Davis Brin, two to the right. Now they'll send a man in motion. Brin looks to his left and fires. Remember, he threw last week 55 passes. Pass Already on line to throw a lot today is Anthony Queeley. Makes the catch. He is a six tier man. Out of Syracuse, good for a dozen. Well, it's just a basic slant, and you better play off coverage. I get it. I understand why these DBs are backed off, but if you're going to play off coverage, the slant will be there all day. Does that mean you got to start bringing up the DBs a little bit? Well, good luck with that because then they'll go right past you. <laughs> How about the draw right here? This one's got a chance to go to the house. O.J. Arnold. O.J. Arnold. Carrying for the 49-yard line inside the 15. Red Potts. Tyler Red Pot stopped a touchdown. Look, if you are a Cardinal fan, this is bad news. Because when Georgia Southern can run the football, it's lights out offensively. And they've won 22 to their last 30 when they outrush their opponents. Good for 38 yards, and they want to go fast. Well, it looks like a video game to them, you know? Yeah. And warp speed. They've got a lot of options, and this offensive coordinator... Brian Ellis, he's got an imagination, and they draw him up really well. That's Caleb Hood right there, their best overall receiver. We talked about Cobb. We talked about Burgess, but they love Hood. They think he's an NFL prospect, so the weapons, I mean, they're a plethora of weapons, yes. and it's crazy. Said he likes to find the open grass on a field. It's always good for a receiver. Now, I formation backfield. Brent rolling wide out, open. man, wide open. Mm. What a beautifully designed play. Keaton Upshaw with a catch last year. Been playing a number of games. This year he's already been effective and a two touchdown lead. And we're not even halfway through the first quarter. Well, that's the old spider two wide banana. Well, Which you're faking the run. Oh, well, that, watch the tight end in the flat. So they're faking the run, and the tight end acts like he's going to block, and then he runs a banana pattern, which means you're going to bow it outside towards the corner. Seven route, they call it as well, but it's all about the discipline, the eye discipline of the linebacker. you got to see it and cover the, line, uh, cover the tight end, or you got no shot. Matthew Daniel to hold, and Michael Lance back out there for another the extra good. point. Last week, Georgia Southern, Georgia Southern scored 14. Already has 14 with 8.47 to go in the first quarter. In a drive that just took 90 seconds. And so, Jim, the, the key to this whole deal is to make this play look like run to the second-level defenders. And so watch the tight end on the left. First from the outside, he runs a banana route. See how he's bending that out to the left? He starts upfield as if he's looking to block someone and then bends that baby out towards the corner. And if there's no man there, it's the easiest play in football. Now, what you're hoping is your safety can read the difference between run and pass really quickly and jump that route. Didn't happen. Touchdown. 
teams so far have defended Georgia Southern by rushing three and dropping eight. How does Tyler Stockton play this offense today? Well, listen, this was, a, for me, you know, you can you can draw up all the defenses you want, but this is about Joes and Bros. If your Joes and Bros are better athletically than the opposing team, it doesn't matter what they draw up. Really? They're going to find a way to win. So, yes, I like the idea of rushing three and flooding all these zones with defenders, but when that quarterback has time, he's going to read it out and hit the open man. Malcolm Gilley, one of the fastest players for the Cardinals, will let this go over his head so uh, 10 yards deep. And back to the 25 we go. Well, you said earlier, Ball State could not afford to get in the shootout, and yet already finds itself behind the eight ball early in the first quarter with no clue on how to stop this offense of Georgia Southern. Well, and to, and to that point, the best way to stop the offense is to possess the football. Long drive. That's right. Sure. And, they, and, they, and they being, Ball State is one of the best in America at holding the football. Uh, they average 34 minutes and 10 seconds a game. Their opponents generally 25 minutes and 50 seconds. They only need that profile. And it starts right now. The disaster would be right now three and out. They can't afford it. That number is ninth best in FBS. We got contact at a line of scrimmage and already second best time of possession in the Men American Conference. Going to be offsides. Patrol Bullard. Against Georgia Southern. And so a free five yards. Got to help. Doesn't hurt when your team is down two scores. That's right. David Siegel, the man with a white hat. Mid American Conference officiating crew. Defense, Defense number 57 with contact. Five yard penalty for stop. Clay Helm, a joy to talk to earlier in the week. He's got family coaching in Western Kentucky. His brother, his dad, longtime coach, and revered throughout the college football world. First and five, Caden Samanza with the fake and the rollout. Nobody home for a while, then finds a man. First down past the 40-yard line, that's Malcolm Gilly. He's their speed guy, and there's two ways to get deep in college football. Straight nine routes right down the field, or over routes and dig routes where you can run away from defenders. And watch number seven crossing and running away from a defender. They think they're going to get a lot of man coverage today. And, and which makes sense because you got to stop this run game. So I expect Caden Simonza to have some opportunities for some big plays downfield. Can they hit him? Keep an eye on 14. Mentioned him earlier, Ahmad Edwards. Good wide receiver, flanked to the right of Simonza, who's over center. To put the ball on the ground, Marquez Cooper. Marquez Cooper. Marquez solid on first down, picks up six. That's a solid tackle by Jalen Ditton as well, coming up from his secondary position, but this is what the Cardinals are. This is their identity, baby, and they got it established last week. They played two power five clubs in the first two games. Hard to run the football against bigger, stronger, faster athletes. Last week was a confidence builder against Indiana State. They want to come in with that momentum and establish who they are as a running football and then play action pass off of that. You mentioned Denton played 10 games at Ole Miss before reaching the portal. Kylie's in the game number one. They set up a screen on the opposite side. And are very close, in fact, have the first down as Gilly. He was a 100-meter state runner-up in high school. Gets five for the first down, moves the chains, and more importantly, keeps the ball in the hands of Ball State. First down now from the Georgia Southern 46. Edwards and Maywood to the outside. Samanza over center. Back to Cooper. Straight ahead. Gobbled up. Marquez, the line of scrimmage. I only see Marquez a little bit so far, but what are your thoughts? Well, I like his quickness, and I like the fact that they're trying to establish him that, uh, in this game. And that time they decided to go with 12 personnel. Uh, they had two tight ends, one back, and they run split belly. And so they bring a, the crossing blocker from the left side to the right side to kick out the end and let really let Cooper take it where he sees it. Working its way down to six minutes in the first quarter. And a loss on the play of two yards will be third and ten. Met immediately. Mark Stampley up to make the tackle from his outside linebacker position. And look at Stampley coming. And what I like is no hesitation, no chopping of the feet. 
they were bringing him on a blitz anyway. So he's now the on the free hitter, the unblocked defender. But you see a lot of guys come in hesitant, Jim, and miss tackles. Not that time. Nice job by Stampley to go get it. Got to get to the third, uh, 36, Tioka. Samanza in trouble. Samanza sacked. Back at the 47-yard line. Looks like Deshaun Davis and Marquez Watson Trent, who last year had 114 tackles in a regular season. When you turn on the tape and watch Georgia Southern, you see a fast group. I mean, they come at you in waves. Look at the multiple guys trying to get hits. I love defenses that play hard and run to the football. And that was a nice move by Deshaun Davis. Orioles' last punt, just 31 yards. Line of scrimmage here, Cardinal 47. Bounces at the 15 and out of bounds. Better punt this time around. When we come back, another offensive possession for Georgia Sutton, threatening to uh, maybe blow the Cardinals out here in the first half. So sign up now at ESPNplus.com. Last year, under the lights, Ball State and Georgia Southern. Kyle Van Treese, the quarterback, with the fake, the rollout, and a quick toss for the touchdown for the game. Two touchdown passes, no picks, and a 35-24 victory for Georgia Southern. 34-23, excuse me. So, Van Treese, well, the Cardinals have him right where they want him right now, on the sidelines doing radio. <laughs> That's right. He's I not mean... eligible. He's <laughs> Graduated. Well, it makes me nervous because he might take my job. <laughs> 26 for 39 officially in that victory last year by 11. O.J. Arnold, Arnold carries for carry. Georgia Southern. Just joining us, total amount of yards. It's been uh, lopsided, 115 to 24. Georgia Southern, and with two scores already, a 14-0 lead. Quarterback here is Davis Brin. Sixth year out of Tulsa, where he set a lot of records. And around. The man with the speed, Hood. And how quickly he gets around. Caleb Hood. Caleb Hood. Almost makes the defense look like they're playing uh, playing quicksand. Jack Sapis shaking up on the sidelines for Ball State. That's a pickup, a 16. As Sapis going right to. Uh, Right to the ground for an examination. Not sure how it happened, but that would be a huge loss at the defensive end spot. First and 10. Georgia Southern on the move again. And Bryn's doing whatever he wants in this game. Derwin Burgess. Who suffered a broken leg last year after the Ball State game and missed the rest of the season. In fact, he... Missed a total of 10 games. You mentioned Bryn's doing every, whatever he wants, and the reason is because of this run game. They're able to run the football, and, and I get what they're doing. Nice job uh, of play calling by Brian Ellis. This is a coaching tape of play calling because you, the defense is in a quandary. Do, do we rush three and give up running, or do we go to four-man and try to get after this quarterback? You mentioned the balance, 66 yards on the ground, 75 already in the air for Georgia Southern. No pressure on Bryn, a little toss like a running play nearly. And O.J. Arnold does a principal amount of running. Had seven carries for 38 yards last year against Ball State. Came up with the ball. Tyler Stockton is fighting Irish tonight, facing Ohio State at Notre Dame. I know his concern is here, but he was telling us during the week it's going to be electric in South Bend tonight. No question. As an old nitty line, I got a hard time rooting for either of those guys. <laughs> but, I mean, I guess if I had to pick someone, I, you know, go ahead, Ohio State, win that game so that my Nitty Lions can knock you off, and you're as high ranked, <laughs> highly ranked as possible. Only third down effort so far for Georgia Southern. And the Eagles are one for one. First down picked up near midfield. What a good first half for the visitors from the Sun Belt and a rough one ball for Ball State. Yeah, the balance is just, it's, it's been a clinic, really, in terms of balance. And look, it's hard to stop the team for one and a half yards. So they being so efficient on first and second down, leaving them third and short. I mean, that's pretty good defense right there by the Cardinals, but when you need that sort of yardage to convert, it's tough. Terrence Gibbs now in the game as he spots O.J. Arnold for the moment. 
touchdown. We'll send action. a tight end in motion. Bryn, another safe pass, and on first down, that one is good for seven yards. Keaton Upshaw with the catch. Bryn came in 72% completion, and that number is going up today. Got an injured Cardinal. And timeout being called with a buck 49 remaining in the first quarter. Davis Bryn threw 52 passes last week, completed 33 of them, but also threw five interceptions. Only had two coming into the game. And, I mean, that was an opportunity there for Georgia Southern to get a signature win. I mean, they outpassed Wisconsin, had more total offense, had less penalties, and had more time of possession. I mean, that should have been a win. But, yeah. And they had the lead in the third quarter. But uh, the, 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 the turnovers, I mean, six total turnovers. You can't win on the road against a Big Ten team that's going to contend for a Big Ten title, a Big Ten West title. You just couldn't do it. Track High School All-American injured on the uh, on the play. That's Damian Charity. Last week, 35-14. Total amount of yards were over 900. It was a 28-0 run in the second half that made the difference. Well, what did uh, Ellis, the coordinator, say? You know, uh, uh, the plan with Bryn this week is make sure you hit the guys on the white jerseys, <laughs> which reminds me of a quote from uh, Joe Tiller many years ago. Took the job at Purdue, and he said, as long as our quarterback doesn't hit the open linebacker, we're going to do well. You know who the quarterback was? Who was it? Drew Brees. Wow. Well, and, and Drew Brees, more often than not, to hit the right guy. <laughs> that's exactly right. Uh, so uh, and the it, guys are the same jerseys. And, look, you asked Brian Ellis about the mentality of the quarterback, and we'll talk about that on the other side of the break. Sure. Be a tough loss for Ball State and Damian Charity. Quarterback Damian Charity, who transferred from Old Dominion, may have suffered a stinger moments ago. And in fact, we'll show you how it happened. He's from that 757 area code with lots of talent, Tampton VA. Take a look at number 11. Watch the hit take place right in the crease between his shoulder and the neck. And see that reaction? Uh, that's smart. I've been there. It feels like a, a grenade went off inside of your body in between that neck and shoulder, and it takes about five minutes to get back, and you're fine after that. Hopefully that it's just that simple, and he'll be back in the ball game. Davis Brin has had his way so far, 11 of 13. 86 yards, faking here, looking down the field. Instead, drops it off to the near sidelines, Derwin Burgess. And Burgess is short of the first down by about two yards. Uh, one of those nothing plays again, Jim, where you're looking downfield, looking to take your shot, but with his experience, he knows I've got to check that. I don't have to force this thing. Yes, we're up. I could maybe be loose with the ball. No, he learned from last week being loose with the ball doesn't work. Let me hit the check down. Don't force anything. Let the offense work for you, not against you. Think that's the difference with the use of the check downs today as opposed to last Saturday? No question about that. On the rush for a first down, they're going to be short. No gain by Gibbs. So now it is fourth and two. And a decision for Clay Helton. Probably not a difficult one, the way this offense has been moving. Georgia Southern struggled last Ooh, season. Oh, how about this? Yeah, they, yeah, about that. They, they, they gave up the ball. They struggled last season at third and short. And, and that's a big play by the Cardinal defense to take a stand. Their offense needed it. Their team needed a stand to be taken right there. So great job defensively. That D-line was like a wall when they play. What a punt from the Cardinals, 43-yard line. Alex Smith out of Melbourne, Australia. Matchup of Aussies today. What do you think about this decision? I thought they'd go for it the way they've been moving the ball, but Ball State hasn't done much on offense. And you can pin the Cardinals inside the five. How about that? Ooh. Ball is 20 ticks the on the clock. Ball State will start from its own three-yard line already in a 14-0 hole. And a nice play by 29, Justin Myers, part of the special teams for Georgia Southern. Watch the gap control by this defense. There's a hat in every gap, and there's a free hitter that comes in low. I just want to see the wrapping of the arms. Everything else was perfect, and you're speaking of perfect. This, this punt is as good as it gets. You know, I don't like to give a lot of props to punters and kickers. But, Why is uh, that? 
<laughs> well, I mean, listen, they don't uh, they don't get me started. I mean, you know, the way they practice is a country club out there, right? I still got bad memories of looking over and seeing kickers with the Gatorade bottle. But the point is, that's great execution of pinning an offense down inside the five. So Joe Powell allowed that, huh? <laughs> he did. <laughs> Marquez Cooper in the end zone right now for Ball State, trying to get out of it. Instead, Samanza throws a nice safe pass to Ahmad Edwards. Wow. Edwards driven out of bounds around the five-yard line. He's got great speed. Mark Stampley up to make his second tackle of the first quarter, and that could be the last play of the first quarter. It's all Georgia Southern so far, folks. Most impressive performance coming out of the Sun Belt. They have jumped on Ball State early and often. Cardinals going to try to dig out of its own deep territory. We start the second quarter. 14-0 in favor of the Eagles. A spectacular day for college football here on ESPN Plus. Quarter two to begin. Ball State backed up near its own goal line. Outrushed in the first quarter, 69 to six. Caden mm. Samanza, the freshman at quarterback. Marcus Cooper breaks one to tackle, and then is Marquez gobbled up as he gets to the eight-yard line. And Terry and Lee who played 23 games with uh, Texas A&M. Up to make the tackle. It was a nice move by, by Cooper right there, right in the hole. Cardinals came in at a minus 37. You can add 14 to that. A minus 51 for the first half. Three receivers set, need to pick up the first down, and that's not even close. Intended for Tanner Koziel. And so the Cardinals pinned in their own end zone giving up the football again, what's been a disastrous first half. Well, he had an open receiver. Tanner Kozil was open. The problem is Marquez Watson Trent was in the quarterback's face, and he forced a high throw. That's why it's so invaluable to be able to get rushers, get guys in and around the quarterback to make him feel pressure and affect the throw. Kevin Lynch, the offensive coordinator, told us earlier in the week, Tayoka, that you can't block Marquez Watson Trent. That's the problem. <laughs> Hood is already in punt territory in the Cardinal region. Now this one's going to back him up as it goes out of bounds. Yeah, great spot, though, for Georgia Southern. Well, the way things are going, you get the feel of Georgia Southern scores. Cardinals are going to be in a real world of hurt, as if they're not already. Well, to that point, the Eagles have won 66 straight games when holding a 17-point lead at any point to the, uh, in the ballgame. Wow. Think about that. So this is critical, a critical drive for this Cardinal defense. Fourth quarter, Northern Illinois for the MAC, leading Tulsa 14-12. to 12. And Toledo, the odds-on favorite to win the league, leading Western Michigan 14-7 in the second. I will say the Cardinals' defense has gotten better, especially against this run game. They cannot allow this run to get going in any way for the rest of this game. O.J. Arnold is part of the run game in the backfield right now. Gets the handoff. Arnold, and a cut to the near side. Didn't go very far. It's a nice play. I mean, and it starts inside. There's no way to run inside. Watch the gap control again. This ball is designed to go up inside. Well, there's nowhere to go. And that's defensively, that's the right way to keep that ball bouncing to the outside, to the free hitter. And that's a great job of coming up and making a tackle by Jordan Coleman. Now Brent on second. Now, man, wide open, tight end inside the 20-yard line. 87, Evan Lester, Jr. Second catch of the day out of Dalton, Georgia. Good for 22 yards. And guess who's back in the red zone? Yeah. And they're moving quickly, too. So you can't substitute. No, sir. It's the advantage of having a high-flying offense. Back to O.J. Arnold. Straight ahead. Got wrapped up for the moment. James Maxson was up there, but he wasn't the only one. He's the backup defensive end. So right now, the Cardinals defensively are starting to, 
to really bow up against this run, which you need to do. And this is not a running football team. You, no. you should give them no opportunity to run the football, make them one-dimensional, and then turn on that pass rush. So right now, he's starting to solidify. The problem is too many wide-open receivers when they do throw it. Yeah, just like the play earlier, good for 22. Again, for the shotgun, the veteran Davis Brin. Off the fake, nobody home, and he's going to run it. Or will he? No, he'll throw. End zone broken up. Is that Jordan Riley over there? Yep. I love the quote from Mike New. He said that when Riley gets to the ball, bad things happen, bad intentions. Yeah, and, and, and the reason why is because not only is he their fastest defensive player, he's their hardest hitter. Yes. So he shows up in a bad mood. But again, you see the deceptive <laughs> athleticism from Bryn. Nice job of getting outside the pocket, but always with his eyes downfield. But I love Jordan Riley's physicalness with his hands at the catch point intended again for Evan Lester it is third down big play for the Cardinals defense to try to hold him to a field goal attempt and this play gets blown up in a hurry five yards going back against Georgia Southern false start so probably. third and 10 yes sir it becomes third and 15 Number 74. Five -yard penalty. Third down. Kyle King re-enters the game for the Cardinals played a couple years at Michigan State he wears 54 Speaking of Michigan State, that's a mess over there, isn't it? Oh, man. I mean, my goodness. After having a, a dream season a couple years ago, wow. to be with no one saw this coming, to be where they are. I mean, they, they in Northwestern right now are in, the, are in the bottom in the doldrums right now. Yep. Davis Brin stepping up, looking, looking, throwing, incomplete. That was a catchable football by Derwin Burgess. But that brings up fourth down and a field goal attempt to try to expand the lead to that. Magic number that you mentioned, 17, where this team doesn't lose. No question. Well, watch Bryn step up into the pocket. Poise and calmness. you got to catch that ball. You've got to make that play, Derwin Burgess. You're too good a football player. Runs a stop route. Now he's improvising. Go ahead and catch that ball and make a touchdown. Why not? <laughs> I mean, make a big play. Sure. Between the hashes, Michael Lance from 41 yards out. The hole by Matthew Daniel. Snap, ball down, kick on the way. Good. 17-0 Georgia Southern to get points out of the drive. 12.37 remaining here in the first half in Muncie. On a sunny day, the calendar has slipped from the summer to the fall. Cardinal fans in attendance. Ball State completes its second consecutive home game after beating Indiana State last week 45 to 7. Got to bring the tanning lotion. That sun is still pretty strong here, even uh, in late September on the threshold of early October. Beautiful day. Kawoka Jackson and Jim Barber and Tioka is uh, glad he's here with us today because I know his thoughts are with Penn State tonight. Ooh, in a whiteout situation man, against, against Iowa. Yeah, tough Iowa team, but you know what? Nobody beats us in whiteout game. At <laughs> night, are you kidding me? Please, I'm not that. a betting man, but my money would be with the Indian well, I still remember that incredible comeback against Ohio State a few mm. years ago. Mm -hmm. Down 17. Malcolm Gilly is back at the goal line. Can he return one here? He's got a chance. Run up on the 10-yard line. Gilly to the 20. Ooh. And Gilly blasted oh, past the 20. That's number 12. It looks like it is Tracy Hill Jr. on special teams. So let's see if Ball State makes a change at quarterback, and it looks like Kai L. Kelly will come in the game. Out of Little Rock, Arkansas. He can play the, a number of different positions, but I think right now Mike needs a spark. Yeah, and especially in this run game. And, I've, and he's that type of athlete. He's very explosive, quick acceleration. New says one of the best athletes on the offensive side. Little jump pass. How about this play to Marquez Cooper? I always thought the Auburn Tigers made that famous against Alabama many years ago. Run pass option. Well, when you got you see a flag, flag. flag. Yep. yeah. When you got a dynamic athlete like that, you know all eyes are going to be on him. We're talking about Kyle Kelly. Ineligible receiver, downfield, offense, number seven was covered up. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat, 
first down. A couple of years ago, the NCAA added an additional official in the center judge to catch that very infraction. Yeah, and, and because a lot of teams were exploiting the rule, and in order for him not to get that call, that ball has to be thrown behind the line of scrimmage. In college football, you can throw that ball behind the line of scrimmage, and all of the, the linemen can get downfield. But if that's thrown across the line of scrimmage, you got to stay in that little gray area of one and a half, two yards. They'll let you get away with it. So instead of a first down, it's first and 15, many yards back. Cooper still trying to find his way into that Mark second line of defense, but not much happening so far. He gets bodied up pretty quickly. And see, this is the guy that got to get going. Uh, they've got to get Marquez Cooper loose. Uh, you know, he came into this game averaging 4.4 carry. He's well below that now. This guy was first team all Mac last season with Kent State. Right. I mean, he rushed for over 1,300 yards. He's replacing a great back from last year that they had here. And Carson Steele was at UCLA, hit the portal. He went for over 1,500. So this team has to run the football. Tackle made on the previous play by Jacob Ferguson. Cooper right now six carries for only 15 yards. Samant's in trouble and sacked. Never saw Mark Stampley coming. Third tackle of the game. First sack. And the Ball State Cardinals have nothing going on offense right now. Well, I love the, the call by Brandon Bailey to dial up some pressure as you bring your safety off the corner. More of a nickel, really, a nickel corner off that corner. No one picked him up, and, and Caden never felt him. And so he's lucky that ball stayed in his hands because that's usually one of those plays where that ball pops out and it's a scoop and score situation. Freshman's got to be really smart with this football in this area of the field. Samanza on the rollout, still with a football. And he runs out of the 25 and well short of the first down marker, and the Cardinals have to give up the football. That's great third down defense, plastering when the quarterback gets loose. And that's what I'm talking about, being careful. He wanted to throw that ball downfield, but that's a smart play by a young player. Don't force it. We know the scoreboard is not where you want it to be. You know you want to make a play, but you got to be smart. And an interception in this situation would be a complete disaster. Caleb Hood back in his own territory this time for a change. Lucas Borrell to punt. I mean, to look out for number seven, Caleb Hood. Now, this yeah. guy, boy, he is special with the ball in his hands. Got a few high school track stars on this Georgia Southern team. High end over end kick fielded at the 30. Even makes a five yard Caleb catch and run look interesting. <laughs> Next week on the Mac on ESPN. Time for the start of Mexican five conference games starting at noon Eastern time with Buffalo winless at this point of the season against Akron. Eastern Michigan on to Central Michigan Eastern play tonight at Jacksonville State. Miami, a surprise two and one will take on Kent State. Toledo, by the way, will be home for its fourth consecutive game against Northern, which has fallen behind Tulsa here in the fourth quarter today and the Cardinals on the road at Western Michigan in Kalamazoo. Hope you can join us for all or some of these games on ESPN Plus. Tayoka Jackson, Jim Barber, all Georgia so Southern so far. This is O.J. Arnold, high steps his way to a first down. And a pickup of 11 on first down. Davis Brent's numbers to this point, 13 of 17. 108 and two touchdowns, a different man wow. than the guy we saw against Wisconsin. Last yeah, week. I mean, that's what you want to see, a guy come back from the worst game of his career. You throw five picks, you can hang your head and lick your wounds and feel sorry for yourself, or you can go to practice and get better, and that's clearly what he did. That'll be against Georgia Southern, pin him five yards back. Western Michigan has gone ahead of Toledo to back and forth game late first half, 20 to 14. And we mentioned Northern now down to Tulsa, 19 14. That is approaching late in the game. Georgia Southern saying that they simulated the snap, talking about Ball State. You saw Broadway was the guy who moved. Let's see if the officials agree with them. Delay a game, defense for disconcerting signals. Number five, it's a yeah. five yard penalty, first down. It's on Kyron Mims, number five. 
disconcerting signals. Let me break that down. What that really means in layman's term, because I'm a layman. You know, I, I, disconcerting signals. That's why what? we have you here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but that just means you're simulating a snap. You're making a call to make it sound like it's the quarterback saying, Hut, hoping to get somebody off. If the officials catch it, it's going to be a defensive penalty. Both the Mims and Harris, the inside tackles. How about a little flea flicker? My goodness. Well, the play is still active. No, it's going to be an incomplete pass. A forward pass to Caleb Hood. Had it gone back of him, then that's a live ball. And Hood did the right thing. And uh, you can't hesitate as a receiver. You've got to do something before the whistle blows. Well, Brian Ellis is getting his bag now. Uh, you fake the reverse. You run the Statue of Liberty that usually then becomes just an end around. You watch it here. There's the, there's a the jet sweep reverse. Then you fake the Statue of Liberty. Slick behind the back. Now he's coming back for a throwback for the, the guy who was the original Zoom receiver. I've never seen it before. I wish it had worked to see how it was finished. And a play you see in flag football, maybe even with your <laughs> fraternity, you know. Brent on a dime there inside the 40-yard line to the 36 and another. First down, Anthony Queeley has two catches in the game. Played for Dino Babers at Syracuse. Well, he, he's a, he brings a little bit different deal to this offense. He's the tall guy. Great job of reaching back and snatching that ball. Now Brent is in trouble, makes a man miss, and has a man wide open, O.J. Arnold. Out of bounds. They'll mark him inside the 30. That looked trouble for Georgia Southern. And Davis Brent, the six-year quarterback, got out of trouble. Well, we talked about it again. He's deceptively elusive. We're talking about Mr. Brent as he evades the free hitter, and they really like O.J. Arnold in the flat. They love him as a receiver out of the backfield, but that's a dead play. You've got to make that play somehow, some way, Cole Pierce for your team. They need you. Cole Pierce teams up typically with Clayton Call. Look out. Call's not available. Inside the 15-yard line, the Keaton Upshaw was blocking in front of him. Another Georgia Southern first down. You know, the loss of Call is huge because he and Pierce a long time linebackers Timeout. with Ball player. State. As we have an injured player, Georgia Southern, that is Keaton Upshaw. But the loss of Call has been monumental. And in this game, without having him in the, the middle today, even more significant. Yeah, he's a vocal leader. He brings a lot more to the team than just production, which he has plenty of production. Second team all Mac last season, but he's a guy that they look to for fire, right? And he's a part of their identity, and they miss him. There's no question about it. Terrific he is player. A, by the way, he's a future doctor. He wants to be an orthopedic surgeon with a sports team. Wow. That's a student athlete right there. Yes, sir. Sheesh. Upshaw able to get off the field without any problems. Take a little look on how it was happening. He was blocking initially. Then made the catch and kind of threw one of his uh, big offensive line in front of him, and then got roughed up. Yeah, I, took, I think he took a little shot. That pile falling on his legs, 6'7", so he's got plenty of legs. Yeah, you don't want that to happen, do you? No. It is a first down, Georgia Southern for the 14-yard line. Georgia Southern averaging seven yards per play. That's balling. Made a living in the red zone today. Looking for a knockout punch. Okay. 12 first downs for Georgia Southern. Two for Ball State. Ten carries for Georgia Southern, 80 yards. Ten carries for Ball State, 11 yards. If there are any categories, I suppose, that you need to point out for the difference in this game, those are a couple. Ball State right now has to play great red zone defense. They've done it now the last couple possessions. Can they continue to stand up inside the 20 and keep this to a minimum three-point game or no-point game? Yes, and on top of that, Cardinals would get the ball to start the second half. Fake to Arnold. Bryn out of the pocket. Looking downfield and throwing incomplete. It's not the same Davis Bryn we saw last week with five picks against Wisconsin. And six times the team turned the football over to the Badgers. Tied the ball with excellent coverage. You know, when that quarterback breaks the pocket, Jim, it really stresses the defense. You got a plast on your receiver, and you saw a great job of that by a really good corner, backup corner on paper. But man, he plays like a starter when I watch him play. Remember, quarterbacks used to give you trouble when you play in the Big Ten like that, getting I, out of the pocket. I do not. Oh. I, I do not remember that, sir. I'll look a few up <laughs> for you while you get a break. <laughs> Empty backfield for Davis Brin. Looking downfield and throwing over the middle. 
It's going to be short of the first down by a couple of yards, maybe three. Sets up a fourth and three. I think it's an easy decision to kick this ball. But th again, this is yeoman's work by this Cardinal defense. You don't want them to get in the red zone, but when they do, man, if you stand up and force field goals, you have a chance. Obviously, the scoreboard is not going their way, but not giving up touchdowns give them hope that they can come back in this game. By the way, that's tight end Bo Johnson, and uh, we'll tell you about him a little later, perhaps after the break. This is a 26 yard field goal by Michael Lance to make it 20 to nothing, Eagles. It's good. So we tell you a little bit about number 11 who caught a pass earlier today. It's not all he does. He's pretty good in the kitchen, too. Bo Johnson of Georgia Southern is a backup tight end and a terrific cook. I mean, this will get your mouth watering, won't it? Of course. Now you saw the drool. <laughs> I was yeah. hoping to hide it. Hope he's serving it up somewhere in the, in the parking lot today. I, I know he's busy, sauce? but... Yes. Jeez. This is on his Instagram, by the way. Now, look, I saw the way you attacked those house-made chips in the, uh, in the other room. <laughs> and I'm trying to hold you back. It's just on the screen, Jim. Don't try to reach for the screen. It's, it's, it's <laughs> virtual reality. Now, this it wasn't real food. <laughs> this isn't fair to see this before, uh, <laughs> before we take a halftime break. <laughs> this kid's got quite a talent, wow. though. It's yeah. amazing. From their own 25 yard we line. talk so much about student athletes, and we forget that uh, they are students, besides being athletes. And... Bo Johnson's got a great future ahead of him, I would think. Well, Caden Simons is a freshman, and at times today he looks like a freshman. Yeah, he's going to take his lumps. The, the whole thing, though, is the other 10 men on the line uh, on his side has to has to pick it up for him. He, they've got to find a way to run this football. One way or the other, they've got to get a ground game going to help him out. Caden, 3 of 5 for 21 yards. Here's Cooper off the wide pitch. Nothing there. Got three, fortunate to get that much as second line of defense. Shamar Bartholomew will have to make the tackle. The team speed of this Georgia Southern defense is so impressive because you got a hat on the hat at the point of attack. You watch. There's no penetration. There's a hat on the hat, but the free hitter can run, and he's going to meet the ball carry with physicality and wrap his arms I mean, it's really tough when the speed of the defense is so high. That's a good point. He arrived, by the way, Bartholomew on the scene just back in July. Rico Barfield's in the backfield. Maybe he can make a difference for the Cardinals. Samanza on second down. One of the things they haven't been able to do, and it's partly because of inaccurate passing, is find the tight ends today. Yeah, well, initially they thought they wouldn't get a lot of man coverage. Well, because the run game has been shut down, you've seen... Georgia Southern now settle into zones and make it tougher to throw the ball. But that time, you had a tight end and a quarterback on the same page. Tanner Kozeal did a great job of finding a void and sitting down. You don't want to run through zones, Jim, because you run into another defender. You find the void, the open grass, and you sit it down and hope that your quarterback sees the same thing. That time the freshman hit him. Nice job. Now you got third and short. Tanner's numbers last week, impressive against FCS competition. Seven catches for 60 and a score. Rico Barfield bounces off one and is right at the stick. I would think if he's even short, there shouldn't be any indecision here in a game where you're down by three scores that you have to go for it. Well, that was a phenomenal effort by Barfield because he was stopped. And, and he got was, the first down. Yeah, he did. And it was the second effort that did it. It behooves the Cardinals after this first down run with the second effort. Boom. I mean, that's a, that's a defensive lineman he's running through. That just that's not a DB, right? I mean, we're talking about a guy who is what six foot, three hundred thirty-five pounds, and K. Aaron Smith. So K. Aaron Smith got ran through by a guy that's much smaller. You can't have that as a nose tackle. No, sir. From the thirty-five, fresh set of downs. I was going to mention it behooves the Cardinals to try to move down the field, which is difficult enough. Control the clock. Don't give the ball back to Georgia Southern. And then you get the opening kickoff to start the second half. Well, they had it an sounds easy, doesn't it? it? It does sound easy, but and you got you got to make the plays when they're there. You had man coverage against Kozeal, and and you just miss him. I mean, you got a six seven, two hundred forty pound tight end with man coverage on a smaller guy playing off. Go ahead and get yourself six yards right off the top to stay ahead of the sticks. They just couldn't complete the pass. He's missed Tanner a couple of times. Do you think Mike New considers a, a change at quarterback? 
Well, it's tough because I think all the guys behind him just don't do that as well as this kid. Yeah. I mean, he's very accurate with the football. And they talked about his ability to be accurate and his timing. Doesn't have He's got a strong enough arm, but doesn't have a bazooka. But you don't need a bazooka when your timing is correct. Nice job right there on the dig route. Keon Magwood, good for 16. Now to the opposite side. What a play. Nothing available at all. And that's Kelly. And Kelly is... Uh, I don't know, you're Randall L kind of player. If you remember Randall back in the years with Indiana, Indiana and then with correct. the Steelers, the uh, capability of playing a lot of different spots out there. Became a, a great slot receiver in the league, but in college he was a do-it-all guy. Quarterback, he could line up at, and play different positions, well, return kicks. Player. But, man, Mark Stampley Second continues to stamp his play on this game. I mean, that was a great job of coming off the block and making a one-on-one -on -one tackle against a good football player. Yeah, loss of a yard. Second and 11, Ball State desperately needing points. All three timeouts remain. Samanza with a look and another look and in trouble and just has to get rid of it. He was pressured by Deshaun Davis and a couple of sacks last year in the game with South Alabama. See, that's a situation. I talked about his poise, and when you watch the tape, it shows up. He's very poised, but here, I think the freshman can stay in the pocket. See, there's nothing making him leave the pocket. What are you running for? Stay right, then you ran yourself into pressure. Stay in that pocket as long as you can. Allow the routes to continue to develop and separate. And then you can find a man in the open field. So that's just a, something he'll learn as the reps go up. Stay in the pocket as long as you can. To this point and to this point of the game, 55 yards total for Ball State. Got him. And tipped oh. at the last moment. Passes in Huge play by Jalen Denton. Broken up by Jalen. raised in Memphis, Tennessee, and Ball State's got to give up the ball again. And haven't had a chance to give kudos to Brandon Bailey, the defensive coordinator for Georgia Southern, whom we spoke to a long time during the, the week in our conference call about the way his defense is reacting. And, and that's his own coverage that allows defenders to see the ball being thrown and, broke, and break on it. And Denton just stopped touchdown. I mean, that's a touchdown saving play right there by Jalen Denton. He's upset that he didn't get the interception, but I'll take it. Take a cardinal bounce. Keep in mind, Ball State still has three timeouts left. So ball down. you pin them here under three minutes. You get the and ball back in good field right. position. But Georgia Southern, make no mistake about it to this point, Time has been the better team. Ty Jackson, Jim Barber. Ever wonder what makes a true cardinal? Well, these are some of the characteristics. And by the way, this shines brightly here at Ball State the athletic office so that NFL scouts can take a look. I like it and because it's more than just talent, Jim. It takes more than that to win. It takes more than that to make an NFL roster. And so all those words you saw on the screen, I, I just summate, uh, summarize it with high football character. Guys you can count on, they're going to be where they're supposed to be, when they're supposed to be there, accountable to their teammates. Uh, and that list of nine guys, they're saying, hey, that's the standard right there. If you're, if you're a young player and you're trying to figure out how to make this work, in big time college football, look at those nine guys. You would have been a true Dittany Lion, don't you think? Yes, absolutely. That was what we were all about. Deep in their own territory. Georgia Southern has three timeouts remaining. If it chooses to make a move here. Been impressed all day with the Eagles' ability to run the football. David Bedinga got the first call here. This is his first action so far today. And now after two rushes, first down for Georgia Southern. And you might expect Davis Brin at this point to open things up a little bit. Yeah, and it's interesting because they score a lot of points, but they possess the football themselves. I mean, they've been able to run the clock and, and hold on to this football. The difference is early on they were scoring touchdowns to finish off drives, and now it's become field goals. But guess what? If you don't... Let the other team score. It's always going to be good enough. Yes, sir. And I think they have to be aware of the fact that the Cardinals, while the offense has been stagnant, do get the ball to start the second half. Brynn, out of desperation, gets rid of it. <laughs> Wasn't a problem for getting sacks last week for Ball State against Indiana State. Jack Sape, who had been shaken up earlier in the game, got the pressure there. You, know, you talk to coaches, and, and we talk a lot about sacks, but I think it was presented uh, maybe by the coordinator for uh, Georgia Southern that, a lot of times it's just pressure if you can get out there as opposed to sacks. 
Even Tyler Stockton would uh, probably agree to that. There's no question. I mean, they, they haven't made a, a ton of big plays, uh, but getting around the quarterback and making him throw Aaron throws, that, that's almost as good enough as a sack. Second and 10. There's the cook with the catch. Can we show his... Uh, we show his food again? I would like to. <laughs> Get you fired up, then. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Bo Johnson just joining us. He is uh, an expert in the kitchen. A variety of southern foods. Timeout being called by Ball State now on a third and six. So the Cardinals need to make a stop. Yeah, smart timeout right there. Stop the clock. You, you believe in that you can get off the field on third down, give your offense a chance with as much time on the clock as possible. So I like the call there. Now the question is, these ATOs, these out-of-timeout plays, what does Georgia Southern draw up? They need about six yards to keep this ball. And then on the other side, Ball State, what do you do? You're drawing up pressure, you're being aggressive. This is an opportunity to run the football, so you can't just abandon the run defense as well. So it's going to be very interesting to see these two coordinators in this chess match on third down. It's a big play, especially for the Cardinals. Down three scores. O.J. Arnold in the backfield. Zone coverage. Nobody's going with that receiver, so they're playing zone. Play clock at eight. Bryn under pressure. Can't get to him. And he runs what, what could be a first down, although the spot has him short by a half a yard. What a play by Bryn. Yes. Sidney Houston finally called his name for the first time today. Got a tough spot there. I don't need a measuring situation, Shorter but man, what a play. Now the poise of this veteran quarterback and ability to run. We talked about it. You know, that's sneaky good at running the football when he has an opportunity. Cardinals still haven't gotten a sack, and that was their best opportunity of this first half. Well, that, that pocket just slowly began to swallow up, and most quarterbacks would have been down there. He took contact in the pocket. Fought that off and just went straight up field. You didn't see a lot of dancing. He just tried to get as much grass as he possibly could and nearly picked up the first down. 14 first quarter points. Got Georgia Southern out to a huge lead. It'll be fourth and less than a yard after the official measurement. I don't, I don't think it's much of a decision here. You've got to punt this ball. I mean, this is a, this would be a gift for this offense if you get him the ball here. But look at that pocket collapsing. Now, keeping your wits about you when everything else is going chaotic, that's a mark of an experienced quarterback who understands the position. Got as much as he could, nearly got the first, but another big stop by this Cardinal defense. Doesn't make many mistakes at quarterback, does he? No. I mean, last one was rough against Wisconsin, <laughs> yeah. but other than that, God knows what he's doing with the football. There's second and a half. The clock will now start on the snap. Munson ready to return for the Cardinals. He wears zero. Zero because he says that's how many scholarships he was offered. So that's uh, his uh, motivation. Keeps you grounded, right? Yes, it does. Never forget, man. Never forget. Always on the edge. Munson, track it down. It's going to go past him. What a kick. Oh, man. To the 15-yard line. Is that two positive statements I just made by kickers? Yes, like, you did. 58 yards and no <laughs> return. 58-yard net. I'll do that, I guess. So the Cardinals, a long way to go and not much time to do it. A minute 15, first half. Can they find a way to score? At least three. Here's the drive summary so far. Punt, 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 followed mm. by punt and punt. Yeah. Well, they're consistent, but not in a good way. No, sir. One timeout remaining. A buck 15 left. Pressure off the edge. Samanza picks it up, and his pass is incomplete. So what you're seeing is the coverage is there on every route. There's not a lot of separation from these receivers. What you're hoping is that the ball is accurate enough that their size advantage can come into play. Again, Tanner's six foot seven. 
And they've got receivers six foot, six foot two, six foot one. They're not going to be, be a lot of separation. You just want them to make tough catches. Unable to exploit that height so far in the game. And again, without Brady Hunt. Third overthrow to Koziel, by the way. Wow. And this time, no chance for Caden Savanza. I mean, no chance at all. And now, Georgia Southern, with the uh, sack by a large fall, is going to use a timeout of its own. And still has two in the bank after this timeout. Well, that's just a red surf freshman, a young pup, very active, too. 6'4, 285 pounds from Marietta, Georgia. But Georgia Southern, their first of the half. Let's Mike Dew said this was an upper level, high level MAC team, and it's mm -hmm. just been an ugly first half for Ball State so far. Well, I think there's an athletic mismatch that we've seen come alive. True. And, and right here, you've got a, a big guy who's quick and can get off a one on one block and make a play. But the, the athleticism of Georgia, of Georgia Southern is just really impressive on both sides of the ball and special teams. And sometimes, too, when you jump from FCS back into FBS, it's quite a difference. No question. Last week was a good field day for Ball State, 45-7 win. But it came after playing in the SEC East for two games against Kentucky and Georgia. And whatever goodwill was established last week has uh, dissipated. You know, and I asked head coach Mike New about, you know, the, the identity of his team. Does he know what it is yet? And he said it's still a work in progress when you play, like you said, two power fives and come back with FCS. They're still trying to establish it. They wanted to come in and establish this run game in a half of offense that has not happened just yet. Need to pick up 17 yards on the play. Solid gain at the 20-yard line, but uh, well short on the pass to Keon Magwood, who, by the way, his cousin is Kajana Carter. You ever heard of him? I have. And I ended up texting <laughs> Kajana this morning and saying, I you got really? your cousin. Yeah, man. Yeah, Penn State star. One of the all-time greats. I knew what the answer was when I asked you anyway. Of course you did. You're like a lawyer, man. You never ask a question you don't know the answer to. <laughs> I'm married to a lawyer. Well, that's well, where there it comes you go. From. She taught know. you well. <laughs> so Georgia Southern able to save a timeout. Will Rolson keeping our stats and informing us. So two timeouts remain for the Eagles. Penalty flag on the play on the return by Caleb Hood up to midfield. It's probably going to move back a little bit, though, with 43 seconds to go in the first half. There's also a flag way back in the 20. So there are two of them. It may have offsetting, but that was a clear block in the, black, in the back uh, by the return team. Missed the number, but that's going to be at least one of the, the infractions, clipping or blocking the back. Cardinals are one of the least penalized teams in college football. That's the positive of what maybe you could take from their year so far. But unless there's a dramatic second half, they're going to drop to one and three. For two fouls on play, both against the receiving team, and both during the kick. During the kick, legal block in the back. Receiving team, number 25. The penalty is declined. Also during the kick, Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, receiving team number 15. That 15 yard penalty is assessed at the end of the kick. Georgia Southern's ball, first and 10. So here are a couple of things you cannot do. And we're about to show them to you. Check well, out gonna, the right side see, of the screen. Yeah, and, and you're going to see a guy oh, go down eight. on his First head. Eight, that's one going on his face, and here's another player. Well, that, that's a fake one, but uh, you, whenever you see a player go down on their face, that means they were hit in the back, mm. and that's blocking in the back classic. And then obviously the kicker, he's protected. And look, back in my day, he, he was live. If he starts to trot, you could knock him over. Not anymore. They want to protect those kickers. And you know what? They probably need protection. Do you like the new rules? No. Okay. You got a helmet and shoulder pads just like everyone else. What a dangerous uh, pass there great. against Jordan Riley, who was all <laughs> over the uh, receiver. Stops the clock, but Cardinals can only stop it one more time. So the chances of getting the football back are slim if Georgia Southern puts the ball in the hands of its running backs. Best serve running this football and letting this clock run out. You've done a lot of damage in this first half. Draw play. OJ Arnold, look at him fly. 
Mm. Well, Still. suddenly when Arnold's burst all the way to the 48 <laughs> and a pickup of 24, uh, there's life and the possibility of scoring again for Georgia Southern. That's exactly right. You see them go hurry. Halftime, we'll take a look at uh, a special happening over in Eastern Michigan where a scholarship gets rewarded. Arnold now with nine runs for 90 yards. Thought it was supposed to be Ball State with the That's running game right, today of Marquez right. Cooper. Yeah, this is not the game that the Cardinals wanted to play. They wanted to run the football. They wanted to control the ball. They wanted to keep it away from this offense. They wanted to out-snap this Georgia Southern team, and that has not happened. Backups Kyle King and John Harris in the game right now for Ball State defensively. 25 seconds to go, still two timeouts for the Eagles. How about this on the ground running for the first down? So much confidence in this offense so far. Out of Eagles, they able to carry the football. That's a first down inside the Ball State 40-yard line. Again, it continues to be a closing Timeout. clinic by Brian Ellis on how to call the call offensive football. So Badinga now with his third carry. And the first downs are 15 to 4 in favor of Georgia Southern. What a rough first half for Ball State. So I just think it's real smart in this situation where you got four defenders in the box, five in the box at most. You get a hat on the hat, and you've got an athletic runner with fresh legs because they continue to rotate their backs. You can pick up as much as you could in, a, in an intermediate throw. And so, again, we know college football, they stop the clock at least momentarily on all first downs, but inside the two, they're going to stop the clock on first downs. Yes. That's Anthony Quayley, number four, wide out to the near side of the screen. Still time for Georgia Southern to put more points on the board, already with two field goals after the two touchdowns. Davis Brin, sixth year throwing. That one is right at the sticks and maybe enough for the first down, which would stop the clock. It is a first down. 14 seconds to go, and now a quick spike will bring us to second down. And still, you have a timeout left. Yeah, this is really good execution of two-minute offense. Obviously, well-coached group here. Now let's watch Bryn. He throw to windows. And we talked about before, sitting down in zones. Don't run through them. Find the green grass. Sit down. Let your quarterback find you. Bryn is now 20 for 29, Ty, in wow. the first half. Yeah, that, that's efficient. 164 yards with a ground game that has 132. Yeah, that's the problem. Davis Brin stepping up and running, still running with a ball. Tackled inside the 20, final timeout taken by Georgia Southern with 5, 4, 3, 2. The clock continues to run, but I think the timeout was called with about five seconds to go. Georgia Southern, their third and final timeout of the half. Now either way, time enough for a field goal, I suppose. You know a player is feeling himself. So not only is he making great decisions, he's feeling the rush, stepping up in the pocket, and realizes I can run. Now watch the subtle look back and say, hey, I might pitch this. Nope. I mean, that, that's a guy who is extremely confident and feeling really good about everything that's going on in his field. Now he almost had his head taken off. But again, I can just tell from the body language, the confidence of Bryn is just through the roof. Yeah, he had Badinga trailing him there too. From 37, Michael Lance to try to hit his third field goal in three attempts and bump the lead to 23. Officially three seconds on the clock. And the Cardinals will use their final timeout in the first half. Oh, and the job. kick is on the way. <laughs> third and ice the job. There have to be some stats somewhere about icing a kicker if it really has mattered. Yeah. I mean, I, and I have heard the stats in, in, in the NFL, at least, it doesn't matter. Now, does I not. Okay. I have not heard the stat on college football, but definitely in the NFL, it does not work. Now, I mean, look, it's a big play because it's a three-possession ball game. If he makes this kick, it becomes, I guess, a four-possession ball game. Well, the way things are going for Ball State, certainly. Cardinals will have to think touchdowns only as you look at Sidney Houston and Big John Harris. Been able to contain this offense after the first two scoring drives, limiting him to two field goals and now a third field goal attempt. This from the left hash from 37. Holder is Alex Smith. Check that, Matthew Daniel. 
Snap, ball down, kick on the way. Michael Lance is three for three, and that is the end of the first half. Just joining us, well, in a nutshell, all Georgia Southern. Cardinals came in with high hopes, but Eagles have taken it to them in the first half. Five scores in the first half, two touchdowns, three field goals, 23-0 at the break. You're watching the Mid-American Conference on ESPN. We are at the break, Georgia Southern 23, and Ball State nothing, the second of two meetings over the last couple of years. Chip Barber and former Penn State star Tyoka Jackson with the 50-yard line seats today. Mike New led one of the greatest comebacks in the history of Ball State as a player. How does he lead to come back here in the second half as a coach? Well, it's going to be tough. I mean, let's not be uh, let's be honest about this. It's going to be tough. But I think, and you know, I talked about it. Maybe changes some tempo in this second half. Let's get going with a little higher tempo. See if we can manufacture some of this run game because they have to run the ball. But be that being said, how about taking a couple shots early in downs to see if we can loosen up this defense? In the first half, it was the running game at Georgia Southern that perhaps surprised a lot of people because O.J. Arnold didn't have any problem doing exactly what he wanted to do. Yeah, and so look. It, you're going to allow this offense to run the football. You really got no no chance of stopping them. They're just too good and too explosive with the pass. And so they were able to put together a run game early, which then loosened up this secondary. And then, man, they are some of the best receivers in America. And we see Arnold running it, catching it in the, out of the backfield. He's a dynamic weapon. And they got weapons all around this uh, outside of this offense. But we also talked about the ability of, of Davis Byrne a brand to extend plays and throw the football on the move. And so I was very impressed with that. So they had it all working, but it stemmed, again, I believe, from the ability to run the football early, and then they spread it around to this explosive receiving crew. In this game, Brynn was 20 for 27, 164 and two touchdowns, no turnovers, 16 of first downs for Georgia Southern, just four for Ball State, neither team effective on third down, and that time of possession that we said Ball State had control coming into this game. That's not been apparent either. There have been a few three and outs, but there are still 30 minutes to go. The Cardinals get the ball to start the second half. And because of the field goals, Ball State is really down three scores and a couple of two-pointers. Hardly impossible in college football. No, uh, but that, that running attack has to change in order for this game to change. I mean, this, is, this is an offense that is averaging eight yards a carry last week as a team. I mean, and again, Marquez Cooper went for 177 on 22 carries just himself, and they've got eight yards total. The nice job, too, Georgia Southern has is forcing touchbacks and not giving Marcus Malcolm Gilly a chance to run things back for the Cardinals. Malcolm wears number seven, one of the faster players on the Ball State Cardinal team. And back to the freshman, Caden Simonzo, who arrived on the scene in January. Eventually made his way into the hearts of the coaching staff. Said there isn't a ball he can't throw. And in this game so far in the first half, he has been befuddled. Let's see if the second half changes. On the rollout, Simonzo might have seen something at halftime. Carries for eight to start the second half. Nice job of taking what the defense gives you. He had an option pitch. There was no defender on the end of the line of scrimmage, so he kept the ball and ran it. But I'd like to see him get down a little bit quicker. No need to take any kind of hit. This is a guy on the job training. He's learning with every single play. Let's see if we can see some improvement from the first half to the second. That is a solid point about uh, on job training and how difficult it's been for Samanza, who has hurried there. It'll be third and two pressure from the uh, from the bottom half of the line of the secondary to Mel yeah. Hickman. Yeah, they, they bought a corner blitz. I mean, that's a cornerback coming around the corner with speed. And, I, and, I, and I've talked about how impressed I have been with Brian Ellis and the way he's called the game. But you know what? You got to give some credit to to this defensive coordinator and Brandon Bailey. Yes. He's, he's mixed in some some pressures and some zones that has, like you said, befuddled this young quarterback. 
his team last week after the first couple of weeks or so gave up 10 touchdowns in 12 trips in the red zone. They have kept the Cardinals out of the red zone today. Samanza shooting for a first down incomplete. Bring up a fourth and three and once again Ball State must get off the field. And you've seen a lot of this today. Just just a little bit off on the execution. Balls bouncing off hands, maybe a throw a little bit inaccurate uh, from the freshman who's been accurate most of the season. But it's these little bit of execution hiccups. When you're playing against an explosive offense who's liable to put up 20-plus points and a half, those mistakes are glaring. Even if Samanza is your guy, yeah. would you not consider – Substituting for him if this continues. Oh, that's a tough. That's a tough question. That's a great question. Uh, you know, but what you got to do is think of the entire season. You know, will you lose this kid if you bench him now? Will you lose your team if you don't? Okay. You know, you got to you got to make sure that you're showing your team you're trying to win every single game, and you know, agendas be darned. Right? We have to try to win the game. So it wouldn't shock me at all if they turn to their experienced backup quarterback in in Lane Hatcher because he's had some success playing college football. There's no question. Mike News team in a huge hole right now. 23-0. Conference play begins next week for both teams. Curious to see the energy of Georgia Southern. Do they come out and really want to put the pedal to the metal in this second half and play like they're down? Badinga is the running back. Already nursing a three-touchdown lead. Throw out to the flat. And on first down, where they've gained a number of 78-yard purchases, Derwin Burgess with another catch. Again, he had five catches for 133 a last year against the Cardinals. I like how he caught the ball and got straight up the field. You see so often these little players, skill position, want to show the moves. No, no, take it and go. Eight yards, second down two. We mentioned their third down completion last week, 59% against Wisconsin, which is exceptional. And when you get eight yards on first down, you're able today to make plays like that. That's just the second time they converted on third down in seven tries. But a lot of times, third down success is based on first down success. That's right. And what you see here, that's a cover play. You've got a hook defender running out of his coverage responsibility. That was Jordan Riley. He allowed the... The, the routes to manipulate him and get him off his coverage responsibility. you got to stay in that hook zone area because there's usually a receiver. When one goes out, one's coming back in. Davis Brin in trouble. First time brought down today. First sack for the Cardinals. Couldn't have come at a better time. Sidney Houston was up there, number eight. So was Tavion Woodard. Well, Sidney Houston is their best pass rusher. And he, and he destroyed this team last year. They said they couldn't block him. Yeah. That's a nice job of hands. He did a swipe move and finished with a rip. A lot of times that first move isn't going to be enough to get the sack. You always want to finish with a rip up under the shoulder of the offensive tackle, turn the corner. Nice job. You see how I get excited when I see nice rushes, uh, right? Spoken uh, from an expert <laughs> here, right, at Penn State all those years. Loss of five. First time been able to say that for the Ball State defense. Second and 15. Bryn, quick hitter on the corner, and there's nothing available. Derwin Burgess with a catch, a loss on the play of a yard. It'll be third and 16. This defense for Ball State starting to tighten up a little bit now. Definitely. Definitely. When you run these screens, you're going to have a blocking player, and you need to replace with a corner. So his responsibility went and blocked. you got to come up and replace, and you can't come up dancing. you got to come up fast and hard and make a short tackle in space, and that time he did. Davis Sprint looking to pick up a first down, won't get it. Ball is caught, and it's into Ball State territory at the 48. They are about five yards short. Let's see what Clay Helton decides to do, and Helton has decided to bring on the punt team. You mentioned Clay Helton and his success at USC with the Rose Bowl. When he was fired early in the season, after that success a few years afterwards, I asked him about coming to a different level of sport it isn't any different. And he said, well, you know, obviously the exposure and the communication from people on the outside is different, but um, he said it it doesn't get to me. I try to keep the same composure I always have. Well, did they make that inside the one-yard line? Looks wow. like they did. 
What Great play. job by the Gunners there. My goodness. So Helton's composure under difficult times probably carries over nicely to his, to his team. We'll start, we'll start from the one-yard line. We come back again. Clay Helton started as running back coach for Duke back in the 90s. On to Houston with the same job. Then to Memphis, USC head coach. And then finally with Georgia Southern in near year number two. When you ask him about all the publicity that was generated toward his firing, and he said, you know, sometimes when emotion goes up, intelligence goes down. How about that? And, uh, <laughs> Great quote. Los Angeles media was, was rough on him, but said it uh, he understood it goes with the territory and uh, he has been able to keep a lot of uh, a lot of his composure through his coaching and uh, certainly rubs off on his players you talk to the coaches they say he never Offside, has a uh, never has to Defense, raise his voice yeah. five yard penalty first down that 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 point you just made never have to raise his voice that reminds me of a coach I played for Tony Dungy as you see yes see the uh, offsides there Great example, and and, Tony. And, and when you're in that situation, that's a great job of using a hard count because if one of your offensive linemen jumped, you might move back a half inch. But it, So it's worth the risk because if the defense jumps, you get yourself five yards. And so that's smart use of the hard count. A little breathing room right now from the six-yard line. Wow. Marquez Cooper dropped for a loss. Marquez Cooper, the carry. Tackled in the end zone, but... Uh, Justin Rose and Deshaun Davis on the stop. Point of penetration beyond the goal line. So much team speed on that defense. Yes. It's Lynn Swan, who was athletic three. director of USC. I was at that game. Coach Helton. Yes, you were, because the team they played was? Penn State University, and it was a very disappointing ending. <laughs> was it a kind of a defensive battle you're hoping for? 52 to 49. Well, there's so many offensive players, uh, the National Football League offensive players in that game on both sides of the ball. Chris Godwin, Saquon Barkley, Sam Darnold, Adoree Jackson, Juju Smith-Schuster, and there were more. That pass broken up at the line of scrimmage by Davon Gilmore, a Division II All-American out of Wingate University in North Carolina. So we were hoping for a change in tempo that maybe would have given them an advantage, them being the Cardinals, haven't seen that. We were hoping they'd be to run the football a little bit better in the second half, haven't seen that yet. Uh, so right now it's more the same, and that's a problem. Need to pick up eight yards and somehow ever keep the chains moving at the 12-yard line. And it goes without saying that this freshman has to be smart with this football. And he's working from the end zone, throwing it to the sidelines, incomplete, intended for Keon Magwood. And, and, and Keon was, was vice right there. They had vice underneath and over the top. And so it would have had to have been a perfect throw. I, I understand the freshman has a clock in his head. He does not want to get hit in that end zone. And so, I mean, he just had to throw that football away. Lucas Barrow is back at his own goal line. The goal post in this case. Caleb Hood is standing at the 40. Wow. That's Ball State territory. <laughs> yeah, the plus 40. And now he's going to have to chase it. How about that punt? And he's going to have room to run, though. From the 37, let's see what kind of blocking he's got. Good coverage by Ball State. No question. Caleb, Just a there. modest gain. As the clock stops with 10 to go in uh, the third quarter, a punt of 60. Wow. What is that, a four-yard return? I mean, that's probably yes. a 56 or 57-yard net. That, that's as good as it gets in that situation. And that's a weapon when your offense isn't uh, making things happen. And look, let's be honest. I mean, this Cardinal defense has answered the bell over and over and again without any help from their offense. I mean, you've got to give a lot of credit to this group in red defensively. But here, look at the lanes, though. It's all about keeping your lanes. Do not bunch up. Watch them stop them from getting outside. See, that's a great job of turning that ball back. If I'm not mistaken, that might be the long snapper, 55, but that's a great job of coverage and keeping your lanes. And Caleb Hood had to go 15 yards back just to get the ball. Against man coverage, ball caught 20-yard line. A rope to Caleb Hood. 
That good for 36 yards. And th this is what a quarterback brings to you when he can extend the play. It's hard playing man coverage, period, but especially when a quarterback can hold the ball for three or four seconds. You just can't stay with guys no matter who they are, but then when you're trying to stay with the likes of Caleb Hood, I mean, it's just almost impossible. His fantastic career now, Ty, has over 2,000 career receiving yards. Incomplete there, second down. Well, it, it should have been a touchdown. That ball should have been, uh, he, he extended him a little too far. I understand he's probably in practice, he gets a clean release, and probably that ball gets to the back of the end zone for the touchdown. Well, he's going to get impeded in the game. And so you've got to see that that ball has to be thrown to the right spot, and if it was, that's six. Anthony Queeley's got some speed on him as well as at the one of the wideout positions starting today. 9.15 to go in the third quarter. But Dinga carries the football to the near side of the field before he's brought down. No gain on the play. Third and 10. Algerique Mallory came up and supported, and now he took the business end of that hit as he's still on the ground. I think it's going to be a shoulder stinger situation there as well. We saw one earlier. Started in uh, the game against Indiana State. Had a pick against the Georgia Bulldogs of 45 yards the off the return. That's memorable. Step aside. Find out how Mallory's doing when we come back. Jarek Mallory is up after laying on the ground for a number of minutes. That's a positive sign here. Considered to be one of the better communicators on this defense for the Ball State Cardinals. He's the force player. Watch him playing outside in, not letting that ball outside. That's a good job. Really good, smart way of using your head on the outside of the returner. Not getting any head contact. That's the type of tackle that's going to save this game long term and keep your head injuries out of it. But unfortunately, that shoulder took a lot. And so let's hope that he is just shaken up momentarily and can return to the game. And be fine. So back to live action, third and 10 from the 22 of Ball State. Davis Brin looking for six to the end zone. Did he catch it? Touchdown. What a catch by number seven, Caleb Hood. Well, this is all about the design and execution. Now, anything that you draw up that puts one of the best players on the field one-on-one -on -one against a linebacker, that's a win. And so now all you have to do is execute it. And as you saw, Davis Brin looked off the safety so that we're going to keep this a man covered situation against a linebacker. I'm going to throw it where my guy can go up and get it. And we told you before that Burgess is as good as it gets in this, oh, excuse me, Hood is as good as it gets in that conference. He had four catches for 39 against Ball State last year. He's much better today with seven catches for 107 and a score. Georgia well, the greatest rally in Ball State, State history was a 28-3 deficit on homecoming, and this one is bigger for the Cardinals, now down by 30. With 8.47 to go in the third quarter. Time out on the field. One-on-one -on -one situation. It's big-time mismatch, especially against a linebacker. Caleb Hook goes and gets it with hands. 30 to nothing, Georgia Southern. Here's the man of the hour so far today for Georgia Southern, Caleb Hood. One of two receivers with seven catches, eight different receivers for Davis Wren today, Ty. And what I like about what we've seen from him today is he's beaten man coverage and he's beaten zone coverage. He's shown the discipline to set down in zones, and he's shown the athleticism to run by people. He was honorable mention all-conference as a sophomore, second team all-conference last year. He's eyeing up first team all Sun Belt this year. Good, seven catches for 107 and a score. Just an embarrassment of riches when it comes to skill position offensive players. And it, if you are trying to scout this team, you're going to say, okay, we've got to find a way. How are we going to match up, not just with our starters against their starters, but how is our second and third corners and Nichols going to match up against their second, third, and fourth receivers because they all can fly. 
I think if you told Ball State prior to this game, we'd be buying 30 points after having played Georgia. No way they believe Scored us in the second quarter. Yeah. They've been shocked. Yeah. And let's be honest, we both are. Yeah. Rico Barfield now as a wide receiver. And Saban's able to complete this pass good for nine yards. Now, one of the rare early down throws, completing them anyway. And we thought we'd see a lot of that because they expected a lot of man coverage. They thought they'd have their opportunities early in the game and in early in downs to try to make some explosive plays and loosen up this defense. It just hasn't happened, and that's unfortunate. Yep. Nick Presley with his fourth catch of the season. Getting down to eight minutes in the third quarter. Samanza so needs to complete a number of passes in a row, and there's one right there. Well, something positive. Barfield with a catch all the way to the 47-yard line, 22 on the play. Well, two things. They stepped up a little bit tempo-wise, but we talked about earlier. Remember he left the pocket unnecessarily early in the first half? Yes. When there was no... Uh, no, no rush coming. Well, that time Caden stayed in the pocket and allowed these routes to develop downfield. That's a little bit of an improvement as we see for this freshman continues to get more experience. Four-man rush. Samanza with time wide open. Rico Barfield with the catch and run. Rico Barfield, who they have sent out wide as a receiver, never got picked up. Good for 27. And again, the maturities, we're seeing it right before our eyes. Staying in the pocket. Go through your progressions. Now find the check down. Smart. Really smart. I talked about his poise. I noticed it on film. This offensive line, when they give him time, he can go through his progressions, and he's going to make the right decision more often than not. Great job of throwing a catchable ball to a wide open guy. Sometimes you see him miss the layup, Jim. Not that sure. time. <laughs> Cardinals with 49 yards tying the last two plays. Georgia Southern showing blitz. Samanza picks that up as well. It's a different look on Caden Samanza right now, who is getting time to throw the ball. And as a result, it's starting to make things look a little difficult for Georgia Southern. That's a Kelly with a catch. And that's good for 13. Yeah, Ahmad Edwards, as you're going to see, come up with a really good block on the outside. For this play to go, you need to receive the block. See, that, that's great job of stalk blocking there by Ahmad Edwards. It gives him an opportunity to get upfield and get yourself a first down. Three plays now good for more than 20 yards of play. Now you've got to finish this drive off. You have got to get this ball across the goal line. Four down territory. Be smart with the football as we see the backup quarterback in. That's Kelly. Carries the football. Pitches the last minute. Look out. Ball is loose and for Ball State to get a break. Boy, that could have been a disaster. My goodness. This is the type of game it's been, though, for Ball State. Yeah, Every true? time they do something good, something bad happens. Wow. This is just option football. So it's assignment football. Coming around the corner, manipulating the defensive end. Does a great job of decision making, but the DN wrapped the back arm and got a piece, I believe, of that arm on the pitch that made that ball come out funny. Under five and a half left. Samanza hit at the line of scrimmage. Ball is incomplete. Third down. Passing complete. The late pressure. You just <laughs> cannot <laughs> underestimate the importance of rushing the quarterback. It can eliminate all of the things behind you that might be going wrong. That would have been most likely a completion. The ball would have been on time and on target had that late rush not come and got a piece of his arm. Brandon Bailey, the coordinator on defense for Georgia Southern. Darius Eubanks handles safeties. Rip Rowan, the line, and Turner West. Special teams all have to be very pleased with the shutout. No question. So far. And the inability to line up and run the ball, which is what they want to do, is really showing up in this drive. Third and ten. Samanza. The last moment to the end zone. Jump ball picked off. Pass is intercepted in the end zone. Bartholomew with the interception. A Northwestern State transfer. And that quells the drive. Well, he had nine career interceptions coming into this game and make that 10. Watch the pressure at the end. Doing a good job of standing in, but that pressure around the legs, he takes the air out of that ball just enough time for Bar Bartholomew to come in and undercut the receiver 
And that's just really good job of getting underneath it, going up and get it at the highest point. That's exactly how you teach it. So for Kane Samanza, you mentioned on the job learning experience today. It's uh, been a tough one at the office. Yeah, I mean, look, it is what it is. I mean, he's going through it right now, but these are the type of games, if you have the right mental makeup and the right stuff pumping out of that heart, you'll be better for it in the long run. Parents Gibbs, the running back, along with quarterback Davis Brin. Firing out to Darren Cobb. Pass called by Darren Cobb. Cobb. That is just his second catch of the day. Jordan He's telling you right now, Jordan I'm not making up, you know, stuff here just to talk about. But I'm just no, you impressed. wouldn't do that anyway. No, I, why would I? <laughs> Especially the next to you because you'll call me out on it. But <laughs> this Cardinals defense it continues to play hard. And, and I know I've been in this situation where the scoreboard is ugly and you have to continue to go out when your offense isn't helping you. But they continue to fly around and make plays, and I'm really impressed about it. We're assuming at Penn State that didn't happen very often, though, no, when you fell behind. No, it didn't. I mean, let's keep it fuck. I did. It didn't happen a lot. You know, it happened a couple times in the National Football League. But the bottom line is there's no scoreboard watching from the guys in the red jersey. Sure. And I appreciate that. And I think uh, coordinator Ty Stockton will appreciate it as well. Yeah. Team got punched in the face the first quarter since then. Has allowed just one touchdown. On third down today, not as efficient as last week. Eagles are two for eight after going 59% against the Badgers. And that will be two for nine, yeah, short by about a yard. But it may not matter when they're plus 30 right now on the scoreboard. Yeah. But you know what? You can't do that as a defense. You can't do anything about it. All you can do is answer the bell every time it rings, just like a boxer. Another injured player. This time it's one of the Eagles at the 30-yard line. Would be John Ferguson, 60 year play out of Manchester. He's the backup inside linebacker, and he hasn't moved. Check that Bo Johnson, the wide receiver and tight end. Lying his back right now, I'm getting plenty of attention. Time out of the field. Oh, Johnson will go under the tent for the moment in a play that, uh, well, and he's standing on the ground look uglier than it turned out to be. Yeah, and we talked about playing inside those trenches can be ugly. Look at the left part of your screen. He's engaged with a, I believe that is defensive end Tavion Woodard. And you're going to see the back roll into the back. Okay, that's fine. But now watch Woodard finish him over the pile. And that's, look, that's not dirty play. As a defensive lineman, that's what we, that's what we want to do. We want to send a message on every single play that we're going to be, we're going to out physical you no matter what the situation. So he wasn't trying to hurt the player Johnson. He just was trying to finish the play before the whistle blows. And sometimes that sort of thing just happens. Sure. Again, Magwood is back deep along with Nick Munson, I believe, was the punt coming from Alex Smith, who is averaging almost 50 yards per punt. In the direction of Magwood, it'll let it roll, and it will die at the 35-yard line. Correction, Alex Smith on the punt. Well, if you're OC, offensive coordinator, the Cardinals, Kevin Lynch, how tough of a day as it's been for him. Yeah, I mean, and look, that drive was a beautiful thing. Let's be honest. That last drive was perfect. I mean, you did everything right. It's like that old deal, the operation success, but the patient died because yeah. you throw an inter interception in the end zone uh, because you gave up late pressure on the quarterback's legs. He couldn't be stable, and the ball floated. So at least you got some positive things that you can build upon, not only in this game, but also as the season goes on. By the way, medically speaking, now that's an interesting analogy you have. That's picked off. Samanza now has thrown back-to-back -back picks. And that never had a chance. Jalen Denton, who played some of his football at Ole Miss in a perfect spot for the second interception. Well, he was looking for Tanner Kozil again, and he's missed him a lot. 
and, and we know these big guys are not going to create the separation, right? But what you got to do is you got to place the football where it needs to be to give your guy a chance. So much of throwing the football is not about arm strength, as we hit a call. Sideline warning, Georgia Southern. As only a warning. We Georgia Southern ball, first and ten. Well, that's because Georgia Southern was celebrating. <laughs> right. But, but there's accuracy, and then there's ball placement. That placement of this ball is not where it needs to be. It needs to be back shoulder to the outside where your six foot seven player can go up and get it. He placed that ball on the inside half towards the defense and brought the defense in play. He's in good shape. When you're 6'7", 245 pounds, it's okay to be close like that. But the ball has to be where it needs to be so you can go up and get it Didn't give him a chance. Been a while since the Ball State Cardinals have been shut out at home, but right now that's uh, what's threatening them late here in the third quarter. Davis Brin, to this point, has been sacked just once as he finds Queeley again. Anthony Quilly now with his third catch of the game. Tyler Red Potts, Red Potts, man. I mean, we asked we asked defensive coordinator uh, Tyler Stockton, why do you call him Red? He said, I don't know. It's just everybody calls him Red. Well, listen, you come up and make plays like that in the open field. I'll call you whatever you want me to call you. Yeah, he had five tackles against Georgia, defending yeah. uh, two-time national champions. Badinga carries the football, spins off one <laughs> block <laughs> one tackler to the forty. No gain on the play. Brings up another third and long again, at least third and manageable, but the Cardinals defense continues to do their part. They're coming out and they're playing hard. They're not missing any tackles. They're running to the football. That's all you can ask, Jim. Earlier today, Tulsa beat Northern okay. Illinois 22-14 tie. Toledo leads Western Michigan in the fourth, 28-24, and Ohio shutting up Bowling Green 21-0 in the third. Davis stepping up in the pocket and firing, oh, and a ball incomplete. Should have been completed. Right now on the sidelines, uh, Kelly is warming up for the Cardinals. I wonder if Mike New is anticipating a change at this point. Again, Caleb Hood, he's dropped a couple balls. As great a game as he's had, he's dropped a couple. And this is another one. You got your quarterback standing tall in the pocket, taking the hit. And throwing an accurate ball, that's easy. That's too easy right there. You've got to make that catch. And why not go ahead and be the player of the week in your conference by putting up 200 yards received? Sure. Be greedy. <laughs> fourth and five. Georgia Southern, one for one on fourth down. Davis Brent with time's got a man. Darren Cobb with a catch. First down. To the 23 to pick up a 17 for Georgia Southern. And they're going to go quickly. The sophomore out of Washington, Georgia, he's their all purpose leader. He does it all. He runs the ball, he returns, he catches. Just another dynamic weapon in his offense. You know, Cardinals started this game playing off receivers with their defenders. Do you think that? Uh, Played right into the hands of this faster Eagle team. And no question. That's why we saw so many uh, big plays or at least long drives and ending with seven early. But they've adjusted nicely. As you see, the tighten, they've tightened up the coverage in the second quarter in this second half. Tough catch right there intended for Caleb Hood. Again, that's a catch he can make, though. I mean, he's an all-star receiver. These, these plays have to get squared away. I think this is just enough miscues by this Georgia Southern offense. is going to be a nice coach and take. Right now for the coaching staff, Brian Ellison, particularly the offensive coordinator, they have not been perfect the second half of the second quarter and this third quarter. Right now 31 for 41. At least four drops. At yeah. least. In trouble and has to get rid of that. And that pass is incomplete. So 30 to nothing. But again... Not quite perfect. And that's what, as a coach, I'm going to be honest with you. This is kind of, I'm not saying they're rooting for self-destruction or rooting for sure. inefficient play or ineffective play. But it just gives you the ability to coach up your guys and not let them get too big-headed. I mean, right now, the chances of them losing isn't very big. But you're going to have a lot of corrections on this film to get yourself ready for next week. And the Eagles next week in the Sun Belt will host Coastal Carolina. Ball State will be on the road at Western Michigan. This is... Attempt from 35 so far today. Michael Lance has been perfect. 
And that day continues four of four to make it 33 to nothing. A lot of pushing and shoving at the line of scrimmage. Ball State's got to be a frustrating day for their interior linemen. I don't know if um, the holder, Matthew Daniel, got in the middle of it, but either way. Now, that would be a first. <laughs> a holder? Get in the middle of anything? Well, he put his hands up. <laughs> yeah, I can believe that. He put his hands up. Not me, bro. I don't want to fight. And look, no disrespect to the kid either. I understand. You're a holder. I don't need you getting hurt. You're a holder for a reason. <laughs> Leave that to the big boys. <laughs> but he was in the middle of that scrum, I think. <laughs> 33 zip. So right now, if you're Ball State, the coaching staff, you're looking for look something. You, you want to win games to build character. You don't want to lose games to build character, but sometimes it happens. How do you respond though? How does this team in red offensively respond? We see the defense respond and you got to be proud of the effort they're playing right, hard right, right, don't give up here i want my concentration to go higher i want my execution to go higher i know the scoreboard is ugly but this game is a privilege to play i want you to play like as a privilege Kayla hood by the way ty has tied a school record with his fifth career 100 receiving yard game how about the ones he's dropped though yeah he's dropped at least 60 yards of receiving just on great passes that he just let go in and out of his hands. Well, that's true. By the way, if you're interested, Coach Prime's having a tough day up in Eugene, Oregon, leading 21 to nothing over the Colorado Buffaloes. Listen, I, I think anything that he wins from this point on is great because yes. this is a team that had one win last year. And I've been impressed with how well coached they are, but they are not deep. And using and losing what I think is the all-around best college football player in America did not help offensively and defensively. Uh, so, you know, it's going to be a tough task because they just don't have the athletes up and down the rosters that match Oregon. Kyle Kelly, now the quarterback. And to go along with that point, I mean, NFL scouts were assessing what Colorado has. And, and there aren't many at this point NFL, potential NFL draftees. So what Prime has done has been uh, off the chart amazing. It's been, cra it's been crazy. But when you take a deeper look, you look at TCU, they returned three starters. Yes. Right? And so, obviously, that wasn't the same team. They were probably too, not probably, they were too highly ranked coming into the season. And that's, you know, that's where the rankings before a game is played gets a little silly and out of whack because you just don't know who's coming back, especially in the day of, uh, you know, the, the portal. Yep. There's Kelly having to eat the football there. Back to the original line of scrimmage. Final seconds ticking down in the third quarter. Kelly's dad played fullback in Miami and also played in the major leagues with Tampa, Cincinnati, and Washington. So he's got great pedigree. He's from the Tampa area where I live now. Played for the U, right? That's right. Mm. His dad did, Kenny, Kenny Kelly. and Third Kyle. quarter's over. This is the end of the third quarter. Beautiful day on campus. Fourth quarter coming up. Beautiful bell tower on campus here at Ball State University. Class is in session before a short break coming up in a couple of weeks. Score by quarters, Georgia Southern 14, 9, and 10. Ball State right now, unfortunately, shut out. And have put together very few total yards, 132 for the game. Kelly intended for his tight end. Tanner Koziel has been in position to make some catches today. However, it's been uh, rough sledding. Yeah, you feel bad for him because more often than not, the balls that are coming to him are inaccurate and a lot of times uncatchable. I mean, I understand he's 6'7", but he's not 7'7". Seven, seven, right? yeah. They get that ball in a, in a spot where he can go get it. Lucas Barrow on for his ninth punt of the game. As long as it's been 61. Caleb Hood with that track speed. An electric player, corners coaches. Back to return, he'll get no chance. 
So what might we find out of Ball State, about Ball State here in the remaining quarter with them down by a bunch? Well, I know one thing. We, we've already found about the defense. And you, you, you look at the score. If you didn't watch the game, you look at the score and say, okay, they got killed. Their defense got killed. No, no, that, that's not what happened. Um, their offense has absolutely done nothing and really have put them in bad positions, either whether that's a field position situation, just an inability to move the ball, get first downs. The play count is mounted against this defense, and they've gotten better and better as the game has gone on. So I think they know what they have and who their identity is defensively. Offensively and special teams, though, they need to pick it up. Davis Brin has attempted 42 passes today, completed 31. Got a man to the 20-yard line. Ball is caught and a flag on the play as well. I, I so the catch will stand it. unless it's offensive pass in the first. Well, well, I don't think he. I don't think he caught it. He came up with the ball, Dean. I'm not sure that that didn't hit the ground, but that was player. definitely pass interference. And I think the underthrow really helped the pass interference. But it, of course, if it wasn't overthrown, it'd probably been a touchdown. The intended for the Jet, Joshua Thompson. Two players are down back of the 40. This is probably the fastest guy on the team. And they, they call you Jet. They call you Jet for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you don't get – I never got that nickname. So. <laughs> <laughs> Joshua Jet Thompson, and he had a step and a half. And again, when a guy's that fast, I, I understand you over, you're underthrown. And that's just tough because you're, you're in trail position defensively. Jordan Riley's just trying to run to your responsibility, and then he comes back to you. You just can't avoid the foul. But like I said, that's probably a touchdown if that ball's put out in front of the Jet. That's Keontae Newsom, who returned at a scoop and score last week of 66 yards against Indiana State. Chandler Strong, who occupies the center position for Georgia Southern, is still on the ground. A lot of people go down in this game. Tackle football, man. Yep. Tackle football is a rough game. As much as we've seen innovation and, you know, as much as Georgia Southern plays a finesse game, they've shown the ability to run it today, which I think is going to bode well for them throughout the season. But it's still tackle football. It's still big, fast, strong athletes. Absolutely. People are going to get hurt. I think you asked the offensive pass. coordinator of pass Georgia Southern, Southern, Brian Ellis, defense, three. who the toughest guy is in that O-line, and that's Chandler down. Strong, the man yeah. we just saw. Yeah. At the penalty. freshman, young player, great future from Warner Robins, Georgia. Let's see again. I, they called it incomplete. And Where's the ball? Is the ball on well, the it's, field? It's in his bread basket. No, it's in his gut. And and I saw them. And I and I look. I said it was incomplete only because I saw them signal. But that's a catch. And I think they need to look at this. After further review, it was a complete pass. It'll be Georgia yep. Southern's ball at the 12-yard line. The pass interference foul is So gone. it's good to go. So that's a great job by the replay officials, stepping in when it wasn't necessarily a, you know, an official replay situation, but they were able to look at it and make the right call. And I, like, I think that's smart, and that's good. If you see a wrong, go ahead and write it, even though it wasn't stopped for the replay. You had an opportunity to do that because of the injury situation. Go ahead and get it squared away. Scott Aronovitz. Aaron Owitz is the replay official, and Sergio Covarrubias is the communicator. 43 yards. Davis Brim with a bullet to the end zone, incomplete. Pass is incomplete. Well, the team is up 33 0 and they're throwing the football. Anything wrong with that? I don't see anything wrong with it. It's still early in the season. You're still trying to establish everything. And remember, Davis Brim is still first year in this program. His first season, he's working with these receivers. Let's keep he it going. Is thrown tie for 332 yards. A little hitch there on a pass that goes for about four. And let's not forget also that everything you put on tape, it's just more time of preparation for your next opponent. We sure. talked about that. I'm going to have them against Coastal Carolina on NFL Network next week. And so Coastal's going to have to look at this tape and see all these different formations, all these different movements pre snap. It's just more preparation for their coordinators and their players. Jim Barber, Ty Jackson, early fourth quarter. Georgia Southern marching for yet another score ahead by 33.
Brian to the end zone. He's got a man. Touchdown. Pass caught in the end zone by Anthony Quayley. For a Georgia Anthony Southern Quayley touchdown. with a catch. Fourth catch of the day. First touchdown reception of the day. The extra point would make it a 40 to nothing lead. Well, the super senior from Orlando, Florida, gets on the board. He's a Syracuse transfer. Michael Lance for the I think at this point now, it might be time to get your reserves in. But that's just, again, that's it's a really good job of seeing the field by Davis Brin, reading it out and throwing an accurate ball. Michael Lance for yet another extra point. And he has had a perfect day kicking. So just moments in the fourth quarter, Georgia Southern strikes again, and the Eagles have scored now in every quarter. Georgia Southern quarterback Davis Brin well above his passing yards per game today. He's thrown for 344, he averages 315. He'll likely be moving up in the top 10 in passing yards and game leaders when the FBS stats come out at the beginning of the week. Well, look, we knew they were tremendous through the air, but it was the ability to run the ball that I wasn't sure they'd get done today, and I think that's, that's really something that down the road is going to serve them well as they play in conference. The conference is coming up shortly with Coastal Carolina in a game that uh, you'll be witness to, as you mentioned, next week. Looking forward to it. Touchback. Beautiful part of the country, that's Statesboro. for sure. Yeah. I, mean, I remember I had an emotional moment the first time I went to Statesboro. I'd never seen cotton fields before. Really? I mean, being a city guy from the DMV, D.C. area, driving down through those, those one-lane highways in Statesboro, so cotton field, man. I had to pull over and just take a moment to just take it in. You know, thinking about the history of the United States of America and cotton fields and what they meant to people who look like me it was just... Just a, a surreal moment for me. Yeah, well said. Kyle L. Kelly, the quarterback here, to keep the football on first down and gain nothing. Kyle L. Kelly, the ball carrier. Well, right now, as Terry and Lee came Williams up to make the tackle, Georgia Southern will do its best to preserve a shutout. Last time Ball State was shut out at home, you have to go back to 2011 against Temple. Wow. Which joined the Mid-American Conference for a short spell at one time. Over the middle, ball caught first down, past the 45 the yard line. That's Magwood with a catch. Keon. That was their RPO game that I thought we'd see more of you know, from, from Caden Samunza, who excels at that RPA, RPO game. But that's a really, really good throw by Ke uh, Kyle, Ke Kyle Kelly. And you see, this is about decision-making, pulling that ball out and letting it rip accurately. Because if you throw it a little high or throw it soft, the defender will make a play on it. That's a catch that uh, Kiana Carter would be uh, happy with, huh? Mm -hmm. Kyle Kelly on the rush. Well, we're seeing the speed of Georgia Southern today. How, how would this program match up against, uh, I don't know, some of the better FBS teams, not the most uh, worldly ones, but the ones that uh, we hear about on Saturdays occasionally? Well, certainly offensively on the outside, they have as good a little guys as you're ever going to find. And, and speaking of little guys, we talked about, as you see, the throw to the outside incomplete, but we talked to... Brian Ellis about what kind of player profile he likes in his receivers. And he said, listen, I, I was an average quarterback and I always felt I'd rather throw to a guy who's three or four yards wide open because he got separation with quickness than throwing these 50-50 balls that everybody talks about. So sure. he wants speed and they've got plenty of it. So they match up well. They, they will be fine on the outside. When they play against some of the most talented players in the country, it's the big guys that separate, right? They, you know, the, these big power five teams have big guys who can run and that's where these group of five teams sort of get swallowed up but again in their conference 
they're going to be a heck of an out for everybody in the Sun Belt. Yeah, it certainly seems like it. Cardinals have been weak on third down, but they'll pick up one here. Kelly with his speed. Well into Georgia Southern Territories. The run came from the 45-yard line. Good for 25. A sophomore out of Gaither High School in Tampa, Florida, right now is in development mode. And when his first read's not there, if he has a crack, he's going to take off. And that is not a development runner. That's a big-time athlete with the football in his hands. And when you have guys running with their back to the quarterback because they're man, playing man coverage, that's an opportunity for number one to exploit the defense. Well, Mike New was saying earlier this week, the head coach of Ball State, we got to add more to his package. It's the longest run of the day by the Cardinals. He didn't anticipate that Marquez Cooper would be swallowed up from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You just mentioned the longest run by the Cardinals all day coming from Kyle Kelly. We would have thought that would have been coming from Cooper, but yes. no, no, they just have not been able to get him going and haven't been able to establish him. And that, that's really a recipe for disaster for this offense. I think they will match up better against MAC defenses. I just don't think you'll see as much speed on the field as you're seeing today. Yeah, I would agree. Cooper, by the way, with nine carries for just 16 yards. Wow. Nice catch. And Tanner Koziel able to run out of bounds with that one. Make that Justin Morris. Well, Terry on Lee helped him out of bounds. <laughs> I mean, that was a ferocious hit on the sidelines, all legal, too. They got some hitters on that uh, Georgia Southern side of the ball, don't they? They do, because they got a lot of guys with speed. And usually when you're moving at a high rate and you get to the point of attack, you're going to bring some thump with you. Man coverage across the board. Rico Got the first down. Rico Barfield, who starred last week, gets Indiana State, scoring a touchdown in the air and on the ground. Well, he's averaged 5.1 this season, so he has some ability as well. And you see some nice vision falling forward, as you want to see all the good backs do. But that's a situation, again, a man coverage. You had eight men in the box. They still were able to block it up. That's pretty good run blocking by this offensive line. One of the few times they've executed well in that, that phase of the game. Yeah, it's been a rough situation for the O-line earlier today when Cooper could not find any running lanes. Maximus with a catch there. That's Max Webster who keeps a Maximus as part of his family name. Out of Westfield High School, just down the road in the Indianapolis uh, suburban area. A lot of backup players for Georgia Southern on the field, but it doesn't matter. You, you just got to keep competing, and right now things are looking up looking up for this offense as they move this ball down the field. See if you can bust the shutout. Yeah, it's important. Barfield again, not this time. Thrown down back at the four-yard line. Hodge fall with a tackle. And, uh, fall reestablished that all that line of scrimmage in the backfield. Now that's the that's the type of penetration you want to see from your defensive line. When you get in that backfield like that, there's not going to be any running lanes to speak of. And that that defensive line has done that a lot today. Yes. <laughs> Dominating performance, having whitewashed Ball State to this point. Kelly to run to his right. Trying to get a block, and he's not going to get it. That play right there is indicative of the entire day. You saw multiple white jerseys running to the football and getting there in a bad mood. And that's just something you can't account for. When you draw up plays, you're not counting for backside defenders hustling and being hungry and getting to the football like that. So that's why I always talk about bros and joes will always beat X's and O's. <laughs> When you got the bros and joes, man, it doesn't matter what you draw up. <laughs> They're going to outrun and outhit it. Yeah, that's why I love working with you. <laughs> Small State will try to uh, put some points on the board here. Like a chip shot for Jackson Corville. Number 96, kicking from 23. And the kick is good. The Cardinals will not be shut out. 
7.15 left in the game, about halfway through the fourth. Next weekend on the MAC on ESPN, time for the start of MAC Shoe. Five conference games filling the slate starting at noon Eastern time. Buffalo plays later tonight against the Raging Cajuns against of Lafayette. Akron on the road in Bloomington tonight against Indiana. The big matchup, by the way, will be Northern Illinois against defending champ Toledo. And by the way, Northern Illinois beaten by Tulsa today, and Toledo is leading Western Michigan late 42 to 31. Daquan Finn has had a huge day for Toledo with 119 yards, a couple of touchdowns. I like Finn. Yeah, I do too. I saw him last year. Good player. And how about Max? I love Max and man. Max football is physical, tough. It travels. When the weather gets bad, it doesn't matter because they're going to establish a running game, be physical at the line of scrimmage. All of the teams in the Mac, I, I love Mac football. You know, I enjoy it too, uh, especially during the weeknights in November mm -hmm. when huge snowstorm at Central Michigan last year and the right. run through the snow. I mean, it's just uh, <laughs> just a lot of fun to see the games in November, which typically mean a lot in the league. Quarterback J.C. French now takes over from Memphis. And the numbers today for Davis Brent, terrific. 34 of 46, 344 yards, four touchdowns. And one thing you didn't say, because he didn't do it, zero interceptions. Yes. <laughs> yes. After throwing five last week. Different quarterback today, huh? Yeah, well, look, different opponent. Sure. But at the end of the day, that type of day can wear on you. And well, as you see, French. Yeah, he's still going. <laughs> yeah. But that type of day can linger. And what happens is if you allow it to linger, it becomes two bad games. So he showed me something with his ability to come out and clear it and go play hard. But they talked about they had confidence in him. And most importantly, he had confidence in himself. So I understand why when you asked about, did you, hey, did you have to pull Brent in for a one-on-one -on -one meeting? And when you asked offensive coordinator Brian Ellis, he's like, no, sir. No, I did. He, he, he is all that you're looking for from a mental standpoint from playing a position, and we saw that today. Yeah, indeed. So you're Mike New, the head coach of Ball State eighth season. What do you tell your team when this one ends? Well, listen, you, you talk about the fundamentals and talking about what kind of team are we? What kind of team do we want to be? We have to establish certain things as tenets of our program and pillars of our program. We have to be better on the offensive line, controlling the line of scrimmage. We have got to run the football. That is who we are. We're going to run it. You have to talk to them that way to let them know this is who our identity is. But it's important that you don't kill the confidence of your team as well. I mean, look, the scoreboard is beating them down enough. And, I, and, and being the coach that he is, the positive coach, that he is, I, I expect nothing less but positive coaching from Mike New, and they'll come back from this. He's been, he's been here before. He has had disappointing days. I mean, you got a coach no, no with this much experience. He Five understands. Five yard penalty, second down. This will be the Cardinals' third loss and the third one-sided loss of the season. Of course, yeah. they opened again with two opponents in the Southeast Conference East. In fact, they were teasing the Cardinals about it when they got to and Indiana State and saying, "How's the, the how's your new conference board. doing?" Every <laughs> play in the SEC East for a couple of weeks. <laughs> right. Big payday, certainly. Well, you know, that, that goes with it as well. Yes. And then you get an opportunity to shock the world. Knew it said that. He said, you know, I, we asked him, you know, do you, do you like playing these games? Because you know, you're not expected to win. And, in fact, you're expected to get a paycheck and take a butt whipping. He said, it's a chance to be on Sports Center and stun the world. Right. If you're competitive in your players, you want to see how you stack up against the quote-unquote big boys. Dixon's the running back right now for Georgia Southern as we're down to five minutes. He gets the football, and he doesn't go very far. And I think another point that Coach New will make, this, this was not a conference game. You know, our, our number one goal is still in front of us. We play for MAC championships. That's our goal, and so that's still there. And so make no mistake, he'll bring that up, I think, that during this week to get his players refocused and ready to play again, that there are more important games to our program coming down the road. I wonder, too, if you're Ball State, will you face a team comparable to Georgia Southern the rest of the season? Yeah, again, from a speed 
point of view, I, again, I, I'd say no. I, th this team, and they talked about it. He said, when I turn on the tape and watch both sides of the ball, the number one thing I see is speed all over the place. And it's just hard to prepare for the type of quickness and speed that they saw today. I mean, their look squad just doesn't move as fast. So when you get in the game, you're literally adjusting everything you're doing. The angles they worked in practice aren't working, right? And being able to run guy back, go and pass guys and routes that were working in practice is not working in games. I mean, that's the sort of stuff they had to face today. And I just don't think you're going to see a lot of that in the MAC conference. Certainly. By the way, Colorado and Oregon. Oregon has added two touchdowns, leading 35 nothing toward the end of the first half. And look, I, I think a lot of Lehman fans are going, whoa, wow, prime, this not No, listen, I, this game is Was about it? attrition. And yeah. as you move forward into the season, week four, week five, and Knicks and Payne begin to line. mount up, the lack of depth is going to show up for Colorado. They, they got some the really line. big time right players now. in the front line of their starters, but behind them, there isn't a lot of quality depth there. And that's going to show up against more talented teams. Been a great story. I guess that story for a week will be put on hold. And guess what they got next week? Oh, gets so much easier, doesn't it? USC coming yeah. out. <laughs> Who put that schedule together, right? Right, right. Final four minutes of our non-conference game in the rematch between Georgia Southern and Ball State. At the start of our broadcast, way back at 2 o'clock Eastern time, we introduced the two starting quarterbacks to you, said it was experience against a, a neophyte, and an experience wins out. Mm -hmm. And I'm not shocked about the left side of your screen. You know, Davis, Brand and this offense, they are terrific. I am a little surprised at the right side, only in that they, I thought they'd get a, a running game established to help the young man. And because they didn't get a running game established, that's why you see the numbers so... So bad, to be quite honest. And then the two interceptions. It just didn't have the ability to lean on a running game. And for a young quarterback, that is scary. Charlie Spiegel, who is the backup runner for um, Ball State, kind of resembles a little bit of Carson Steele in some ways, is in the game. Carson's UCLA Bruins getting shut out by Utah today at the break, 14 0. Mm. UCLA's been through some injuries. Those two clubs are still the. Still showing up on Colorado's schedule as well. Yeah, oh, yeah. So. <laughs> Both Spiegel and Steele, Mr. Footballs. Yeah, Steele had over 1,500 yards for these Cardinals last season. He's an, an excellent football player. And he announced around January 1 he was heading west, and that's when Marquez Cooper popped up on the scene. Ball State immediately went after him uh, from Kent State. That's the difference. Minus today. And that's the difference in the game from when you and I were younger. Sure. Well, look, when I was younger, you you were still a little older. Wait, wait did I say that? I'm sorry. Probably, I probably a lot older. But we're not we're not live, are we? I mean, <laughs> I <ain't> no. <laughs> so go ahead and say whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the portal, though. The portal is just sure. a game changer. You lose a guy, you can go get a guy. Yeah. Kelly couldn't find anybody to throw it to. That's 52, Jacob Ferguson. Number one, let's leave the game for one play due to his helmet coming off. Kelly's helmet came off, so he's got to leave. It's fourth down anyway. Well, total amount of sacks coming in, three for Georgia Southern, four already today. Well, look, this, this defense we talked about didn't have a ton of big plays coming into this game. Um, but they've made their share today, and it's because for a lot of different reasons. But those four sacks, they were not getting a lot of sacks. Uh, you know, and we talked to the defensive coordinator about it and say, hey, the sacks not, aren't there for you. And he's like, you know what? The pressures are, though. Sure. And that's most important. I mean, obviously, you want to get the sacks. It's a negative play, but it's a it's a win for us if the play we dialed up causes the quarterback to throw incomplete or move off his spot. We know the pressures are working. The sacks will come. Lucas Borrow has now punted the ball 10 times today for Ball State. Yeah. Hmm. 10 punts from an offense that needs to possess the football is not the recipe for a win. So, by the way, as they approach the conference next week, and a different type of opponent. You see the Cardinals making changes. Well, you know what? I, I think you got to look at your quarterback and say, is he continuing to progress? Is the young player who was in a quarterback battle getting better every single week? You know that a true freshman, his best days are ahead no matter what happens. So you're investing in the future of your program 
during the present. And so if he can continue to get better in the practice field, they continue to see improvement, I think you stay with the kid. I think defensively you're going to be fine. You just need to figure out how can we manufacture running plays? How can we create balance to where we can lean on this, uh, this running game and then allow our freshmen to be able to play action pass have time because his defensive line has to be Second slow uh, because of this run game. That never happened today. So he had bullets flying at him at all times with this pass rush, and that's a problem. Colton Fitzgerald, now the third string quarterback in the game for Georgia Southern, actually started with the Boise State program in his high school senior season, did not throw an interception. And he is out to conclude the game as we have dropped under one minute. And look, when you have a true freshman playing at quarterback, everyone else is on a hot seat. Every other player, the other 10 guys on the field who's with him has to be at their best to support this young player until he comes into his own. And so I'm looking around and saying, am I getting the leadership from my receivers and my offensive line to allow this kid to be his best? Possibly the last play of our game. The clock will stop by way of NCAA rules inside two minutes. Chains will move. And that should do it. Cardinals are walking across the field. Mike Dew to lead the way. It'll be a humbling day for him as he meets up with Clay Helton and the Georgia Southern Eagles who went 40 to three today. And there will be days like that. It will. When you attach your program to a true freshman quarterback, you're going to take your lumps. The question is, can we get better every single week? And as I said before, the best part about this game is it's not a conference game. They'll have their opportunities down the road. And if you're Georgia Southern, man, that, that's the type of win you want to bounce back from uh, getting a tough loss the way they did giving that game back to Wisconsin last week. I think they're primed to get back home in conference and play well. Cardinals had their bounce back game last week. Georgia Southern gets it today and most impressive with a 40 to three win. Well, enjoy seeing them again next week on the road against Coastal Carolina. And I enjoy being with you again, partners. Always a joy. Always a pleasure to hear. Thank you, Ty. We're Ty Jackson, Jim Barber. Thank you for joining us. That's it from Ball State where Georgia Southern dominates winning 40 to three.